Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, bent or broken, at your fall flea market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Welcome, folks. Uh, we've got um, a special meeting of the Ufala City Board of Education tonight, uh, May 19th. It is 520, and I'm opening the meeting. We have a quorum established. If I can have a motion for approval of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, new business? Yes, sir. New business. Uh, 2A textbook adoption you see before you. That was carried out. That says May 17th, but it was the 18th when the committee met for those books for high school next year. Any questions on that textbook adoption? On 2A, textbook adoption, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. We have a motion for 2A. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2B, school bus bid, 15-101. You see the paperwork that Mr. Bailey submitted. <coughs> he actually had to bid this a second time. There was no bidders the first time. I believe that was correct, wasn't it, James? Yes. And uh, you see the bid. Any questions on 2B school bus bid? How does that compare with what we've been paying? It's actually about a couple of hundred dollars cheaper than what we paid in 13. Okay. And James, why do you figure of the three that's listed here, two of them, there's no bid and we didn't have any interest in the first one. I think part of it, Mr. Warren, is the engine, the Why? engine, that, the particular type of engine that we request to go on, go in there. It's just a higher quality engine. It is. The others have an option to bid and they can you know, put an exception in there, but they just choose not to. You have a question on school bus bid. So you're taking the one with the 10-year warranty with it? So we're going with the standard. Five. Five. Okay. So why do we have a 10-year warranty on them? It, it was just an option. Oh, that's an option. Okay. Yes, so you're comfortable with the five-year warranty? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. On 2B, school bus bid 15-101, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion for 2B. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2C, student activities. These are some activities we need to get in front of you. Uh, they will be coming up pretty soon, but some of these are uh, long term too. But you see the cheerleader fundraisers for the high school. Mary Kay Sun Cream products, t shirts, pecan pies, and poinsettias. <clears throat> and then Skills USA, uh, Coach Walker, and a student. And uh, I was just talking to Tim about that. That's, that's just something that kind of just happened, wasn't it, Tim? You just really wasn't expecting them. Yes. And the young man uh, <clears throat> surprised you. And, you know, Sounds like a pretty good, uh, Susan uh, listed two sites there, board, for you to look at uh, as far as what's taking place at that uh, activity. And it uh, sounds really interesting and exciting. Looks good, Tim. Thank you for that. Any questions for Tim on that, for that Skills USA? Give us a little bit of detail on that, Tim, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, of course, in April, we went to Birmingham to the state skills competition uh, for criminal justice. Uh, we took two students up there and they competed. This is what used to be VICA, uh, back when most of us were in school. It was VICA back then, not skills. And uh, I, the two that we had competed against other students from the state in criminal justice, 
uh, doing role play scenario, uh, traffic stop, all related type activities, uh, job interviews, job resumes, interview skills, uh, those things. And our student, uh, Jalen Lawson, won gold medal there, placed first in the state. So uh, by placing first, he now gets to go to Nashville. Is a, uh, we go in register on Monday and then Tuesday through Friday. Uh, they have one day where they'll do community service, doing Habitat for Humanity work. They have leadership development classes uh, over several days. Uh, and then, of course, a day, a day of competition, uh, some other group building, team building events over those uh, four day periods. So we go up on register on Monday and then leave Saturday morning and come back home. And if he places there, uh, he would move on. For the potential for international competitions and also could qualify for scholarships. Very good. What were you doing? He is a graduating senior. Wow. What is, is he talking about a career? Uh, uh, he's actually looking at the FBI as his goal. Is that right? To be a federal on a resume. That's what he's working <laughs> Wow. Doing on a resume. Well, if the international competition in Hawaii, you might have food less. He could go a chaperone. So, uh, we can do that. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, on uh, agenda item, I will not actually explain that there. Then we got boys basketball. You see the activities there. He's already up and running, and of course, Coach Clyde helped a lot of that prior getting that getting that together. Team camp dates. See the women's basketball request on the field trips. Anything? Questions on uh, student activity? On agenda item 2C, student activities, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. Got a motion for 2C, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2D, additional unit at central office for school year 1516. That's just where it will be. It will be out of Mr. Bailey's division. This is in preparation for the one to one. There's been a lot of work put into this, and in this rollout, we can't afford to have too many hiccups. There's going to be hiccups, but with a project like this, but I think we're we're posturing ourselves to to make sure that we are able to catch a lot of the big issues that teachers are going to be experiencing with the one-to-one, -one, that students are going to be experiencing, and uh, I know James and. And Del Tanya have been in close communication on this with Dr. Hanchi too. So there's just a, a lot here that, that needs to happen. That, that's a huge investment that our board is uh, making in this technology initiative. And I, I feel like James needs his help in order for this to be as smooth as possible. Any questions for James or Del Tanya on that? On agenda item 2D, additional unit to central office for school year 2015-16. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion for 2D. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. On agenda item 2E, personnel, <coughs> 2E1, resignation of personnel. See in front of you. 2E1 resignation of person certified personnel. Uh, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. A motion for 2E1. So moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. On agenda item 2E2, transfer reassignment of certified and classified personnel affected 2015-16 school year. You see listed in front of you the certified and the classified. Any questions? Agenda item 2E2, transfer <coughs> reassignment of certified classified personnel affected 2015-16 school year. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. I have a motion for 2E2. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 2E3, the employment of certified personnel affected 2015-16 school year. Any questions? 
2E3, employment of certified personnel for the 2015-16 school year. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. A motion for 2E3. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2E4, temporary part-time employment of certified personnel. <coughs> you see that's you know, with summer school substitutes. Homebound services, access facilitator. Let me ask you, Mr. Beasley. Yes, sir. Do we need a clarification? We have certified personnel, but on our sub bus driver, that's classified. Does that need to be separated? Yes, sir. Okay. It, the boat doesn't have. The boat, okay. The boat. Okay, certified and classified. We'll make a note of that. So personnel, you see the bus driver there. Approve the sub bus driver, okay. So do we need to make an amendment to that? Just vote on certified and classified. We don't want them separated. Okay, okay. Okay. Do we need to make an amendment to that? Just vote on certified and classified. On 2E4, temporary part time employment. Personnel, superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. We have a motion for 2E4. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2F, contract with Education Management Consultant Services, Inc. You see that in front of you. For Consultant Services. Any questions? Two in item 2F, contract with Education Management Consultant Services, Inc. Superintendent recommends approval as stated in the agenda. A motion for 2F. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That is all I have on this agenda. So if I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. We stand adjourned. Okay. We're going to um, work session and we're just going to a general work session. <laughs> you want to take, give Brent a, a chance to speak and then see where you are? Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see that. Yeah. All right, Dr. Hanshi, you're up. Yep, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you all for the time to talk to you a little bit about our new career pet facility that we're proposing to add to the high school. Before I get into that, though, uh, I know Mr. Walker's here tonight, and uh, he was telling you about the student, Jalen Richardson, that qualified for nationals. We have some other great things that are going on in our career tech programs as well that I wanted to make you aware of that you're probably already aware of. Uh, Ms. Allison Mitchell is here tonight. Her BMA program had four students qualify for nationals. Mr. Padgett has recently got some recognition, uh, recognition as well as being a top five FFA chapter in the state. And of course, uh, I think this was at the last board meeting, Mr. Tim Plagas uh, took a group of students to Orlando and they scored uh, in third place in virtual business. So um, lots of good things going on in career tech. I have an opportunity to share some of this information with the Rotary and also the Chamber. Uh, of course, I didn't share specifics with them of the direction we're wanting to go with Career Tech, but uh, nonetheless, have uh, going to share some of that same information with you this evening. Of course, uh, Define College and Career Ready, which I'm sure that you are all aware of, and articulate some accountability for Plan 2020. Uh, and inform you of what our local business and industry needs are, uh, as well as apprise you of some of the programs that we're wanting to add to the high school uh, for year 16-17. So a prepared graduate possesses the knowledge and skills needed to enroll in a credit-bearing institution, whether that be a two-year or a four-year institution, and of course, the real statement here that I find really telling is without the need of remediation. Um, 
some of those things that we're held accountable <coughs> for as far as us making sure that our graduates are prepared to move to the next level, our benchmark on the ACT, those are the sub scores on reading, math, and science, uh, benchmark on work keys, which is a new assessment which students, seniors have started taking this year, which prepares them for the workforce where those individuals can look and make sure that they are prepared and have the adequate skills in reading and math and writing. Uh, improved transcripted college or post-secondary credit while in high school. An improved career credential, which of course is relevant to career tech. A qualifying score for advanced placement uh, on the exam, which the students have just finished taking those at high school. And one that's been recently added is military enlistment. So there's 16 possible career clusters um, that are national and, and, and relevant to everyone. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have uh, most of those readily available at our access. The two that we don't have are one, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, which we're about to have. We're going to be putting in engineering at both middle and high school something called Project Lead the Way. We got a pretty good sum of money uh, with Career Tech to install those programs at both <coughs> locations. One thing that we don't have access to is um, hospitality and tourism. And that's something that we need to consider, especially when our students are saying that they're wanting something in that specific area. You can kind of see a survey that we administer to them. Um, <coughs> Hopefully you can see it. I know that the numbers are very small, but of course nearly half of our students want to use technology every day. And of course that's very telling, especially if we're going to a one-to-one -one initiative. 40% uh, of them uh, want to investigate crimes. 35% uh, how to start a business. 35% help people in need. Of course that addresses our health science uh, cluster that we have. And also the next one, help people that are sick or dying, um, try new food recipes, build or fix things, <coughs> take care of people. So you can see all those on the left of the screen. On the right are the percentage of participants that were in each grade level that chose these choices that were available to them. Region 10 workforce strategic plan, uh, top five target industries I wanted to make aware of you uh, this evening. Of course, engineering, <coughs> we're right on the mark with that. I think we're about to be very cutting edge with a very rigorous program that we're going to be implementing that a lot of school districts have implemented. Also, um, health care, which we're really going to be using Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science Program to drive that. With uh, manufacturing is also another, uh, services and transportation. Uh, an emerging one is customer care facilities with forestry services. I know this may be very difficult to see, which is why I made you all a copy of this. This is some of the regional workforce projections that are applicable to all different uh, to all different students that some that don't that don't finish high school, unfortunately, that you find that on the first page, they are um, they have those listed there, and some of the ones that you can see there are landscaping and groundkeeping, construction laborers, and food prep services. We also have medical secretaries, accounting, child care, and carpenters for those. Uh, students that have a pursuing a uh, associate's degree. Uh, for those students, if you look on the next page, that would be um, pursuing a bachelor's degree. Uh, there would be some accountants, some managers, construction workers, and engineers. If you look on the requirements for our region for master's and doctoral level degrees. They also have some a lot of health care occupations there as well, as well as a need for lawyers. Oh, 
don't think we need any more. There are really four targeted career cluster areas, one that I've already shared with you and I think has been talked about extensively with the grant funds that we receive. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, of course that would be part of this new career tech facility that we're proposing. Uh, another one that um, I say I say that we're lacking because ourselves or Wallace does not have it. Um, for students to dual enroll in career tech programs is hospitality and tourism. And of course that falls into the cluster of culinary arts. We have approximately twenty five to thirty thousand vehicles that pass through our city every day. Many bass fishing tournaments uh, that occur every year. 33% of our students say that they would like to work with something in this cluster and they would like to try new food recipes and things of such. I'm working to try and establish a partnership with the food or beverage industry right now to hopefully have a restaurant in EHS. Um, also, the state of Alabama has an articulation credit that allows for five hours credit in any two-year culinary <coughs> institution or nine hours at Culver <coughs> in Birmingham. So that articulation credit already exists. Students can have a leg up one if they want to pursue that as their career in the state of Alabama. Okay, so you're saying that they can leave the high school with those credits yes. for the college? Oh, yes. Five, again, five credits. Um, in any culinary school in the state of Alabama and nine hours at Culinard in Mobile or Birmingham. Uh, we would try and pursue the CRI called ProStart uh, that would require some students to take some national exams, uh, complete 400 mentored hours as well, and students that would be a part of this would be eligible for National Restaurant Association scholarships. We're also wanting to pursue an arts and AV technology communications program as well. Um, we have a visual arts pathway that's available at Wallace. <coughs> that includes ceramics um, and uh, painting and sculpture, but nothing regarding technology and broadcast. Um, of course, you're quite aware of the Common Core State Standards, of course, speaking and listening and reading and writing. That's one thing that I think we really need to rev up on, and I think merging the two, a synergy exists between career tech and also content areas now. I think it's going to allow our students to hone in on real skills to be career, career developed and prepared for the next level. Of course, students being able to share local news uh, with their peers, um, being able to record and edit events such as athletic events, football, basketball, that can get our students' name really out there for scholarship opportunities. And students could have the opportunity to debate in a simulated environment as well. We could create our own cooking shows as well and have those recorded. Um, we're also working with a partnership with the River Center, which we just started this year and it's starting to get stronger. We would like to incorporate two of these rooms turn that into a black box theater for our students to actually read about a book and then investigate performing um, that as well. Um, that's one thing that we are looking at and we are also wanting to have students focus on a CRI of certified broadcast technologies. Dr. Anson, let me stop you there. You're saying wanting, once we have the career tech, if we have that, uh, will all of these be available? All of these will be available for our students. Press. Okay. And then lastly, we already have this cluster, but um, a visit from our State Department rep for the food and agriculture side of that has recommended that we hire um, someone else to help us and, and broaden our agriculture program. Jacob Davis from the State Department, um, after his NCCER review last year, said that Buster Pageant's program, the student demand for that is very high. So what we'd like to do is resurrect the horticulture program, um, part of that as well, play very well with our culinary program, 
for students to grow their own fruits and vegetables. Um, we would also have a, I've already spoken to some folks with the city, uh, the horticulture department specifically, they have offered up their teaching greenhouse for students to come and work over there. I think it was a $100,000 grant they received. So I'm very excited about that. Not only that, it could lead to us enhancing our local farmers market as well for students to be involved in that. We also have an opportunity to have <coughs> landscaping opportunities at our school and hopefully throughout the city as time progresses. The CRI that we've targeted for that, uh, for students to leave that program with, with landscape design or landscape management technician. That's all I have to say. Dr. Hayden, just adding to some of those things that you talked about in our academies, if you really never seen some of these academies at work, it's amazing. Uh, I know I've been around programs where they've had aqua science, and then out, off of aqua science was horticulture, uh, off the aqua science. Uh, you know, these things are, are remarkable about how students are attracted to these kind of things, uh, the black boxes and your performing arts, uh, the culinary. Uh, and I know the Daphne High School partnered with the city of Daphne and in their horticulture grew all of the plants for the city of Daphne that went around their city that they would plant that we see here in our city. So it was a great partnership. Uh, I mean, I think that's something that can be a great partnership with the city you follow and some of the things we want to do here. I think one question somebody asked me was on the hospitality and tourism. Somebody said, are we just creating a, a another spot where students go in there and do this and then they go out and get a uh, work at McDonald's. I don't really think that's uh, the purpose of no, that. No, sir. Um, I, I, and I should preface my presentation with this, but I have spoken extensively with State Department representatives that represent each of this program. I also talked to um, local stakeholders and university stakeholders. I brought in a few folks from Auburn and Troy to talk to them about if we're on the right track path if we're doing what we need to do and doing what's right for children and they all we all came to this conclusion so this just wasn't a me decision it involved a lot of stakeholders and with regards to the culinary arts program um, it's just not kind of the typical home ec program that once existed i think it's going to be a very rigorous program um, pro start is a very expensive cri that we would be sending whoever we hire for that position um, probably be a chef um, whoever we hired for that position would have to go through three, three years of extensive training. Um, so it's, it's going to be a very rigorous program. Um, not many folks in the state of Alabama have adopted that program because it is so rigorous. But I think it's going to be a step in the right direction for our students, especially since they've shown an interest in this program. And I think that's where it first starts. Students have to be interested in it first for them to really enroll in the program. As far as your culinary, of course, that's just one of them, but I know one of your top junior colleges in the country that does culinary is Faulkner Junior College down in Gulf Shores. That's one of the top culinary schools in the country. We had a culinary academy at Gulf Shores High School, and then our students would go over there. We'd transport them over so they could work on industrial uh, equipment because we didn't have the industrial equipment in our, in our uh, classrooms. We had a few industrial hoods and, and things like that, but it was a great experience for those kids. Of course, you know, you're, you're talking about down there where there's restaurants, you know, everywhere you turn around, you're going to hit one. But, uh, you know, that's a great experience. And uh, the tourism part, too, I mean, this is a, a destination for a lot of people. So y'all y'all saw, y'all heard this program three, you know, when we did our three-year plan a year and a half ago that this was one of our goals possibly to uh, roll out a career academy. I don't think there's any systems near us, and I, Brent maybe correct me, or Dale, or that would have something like this. This would benefit students in Barber County, could actually come down here and take advantage of uh, classes, just like they do over at uh, uh, Carroll of Ozark with uh, uh, Dale County comes in and takes advantage of some of their uh, career academies. It's a partnership there. So I think this would benefit an area like this and, and, and really help our city and, and help uh, 
maybe keep some uh, young people here after they go off for a period of time to come back and want to work in your fall and have that skill. Because the workforce is getting older. Uh, that's well documented by the business industry in the state. And uh, I think there's been a rebirth over the last couple of years to try to bring back careers and teach kids, not just the old shop classes, This is which served us well. But that went away for other things, and I think this. I think this is a. This would be a good thing for I think the city of you follow you follow, city schools and our county. So, any other questions of Brent or Dale or any of them on this? How fast uh, do we look at ramping this up? Uh, how long will it take for us to get to hundred percent? As I understand, I think it could be ready to open fall twenty sixteen. Mm -hmm. and of course, goes without saying you've got some outstanding career pathways teachers here, and Brent's already mentioned some of them. And I just think it's going to get better because that's the emphasis statewide now. Superintendents I've talked to have talked about their dual enrollment in career tech by providing some of these academies and either remodeling their old career tech building or building one has really shot been a shot in arms for their students. So it's just another opportunity for children that might not want to go into other areas. But it's a great opportunity for apprenticeships, for, uh, you know, co-ops and those type things, and uh, uh, partner with local businesses. I think that's great. Bring local businesses in to, to teach or help. Partner with uh, Wallace. Any other questions for Brent? Thank you, Dr. Hanch. You put a lot of effort into this over the past, well, since we started, since the board approved the, the work session for our three-year plan, and I know Dale has been right there with you, and uh, James has worked with you and uh, tirelessly. And, um, appreciate it. I think it's well organized. You, you partnered with the right people in the state. Philip Cleveland is aware of what we're wanting to do. But, the gentleman that Dr. Bice is charged with making sure the career tech in the state of Alabama is elevated to a new level. So uh, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. And some folks go, I know Steve and, and Michelle, they're going to a soccer gathering at the school. They've got a soccer banquet tonight. There's, I think Tim might have to leave. There's all kind of things going on. There's <laughs> ball games at uh, Creek Town, and, you know, there's a lot of things that take precedence. So, uh, with that being said, Mr. Bailey, uh, or board, y'all want to take a quick break before we get into the first architect? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Take a quick break and we'll reconvene in uh, ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, okay. Welcome to Follow Vapor. Save thousands of dollars and quit smoking at Follow Vapor in the Sable Ridge Center on 431 South. You follow vapor, a safe way to stop smoking. Try it for free at You Follow Vapor. All right, uh, we'll get started tonight on the work session. We're going to hear from uh, several architectural firms on uh, some projects that we have uh, to uh, bid out. And I believe our uh, first presentation will be from Phoenix P. H. and J. Architects. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Yes, sir. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you. I'm Hal Gandy with P. H. and J. Uh, and I had David Bess, uh, one of our young architects, with us tonight. We're pleased to come and be able to talk with you a little bit. Since we've not worked with you, I wanted to take a little time and tell you a little bit about who we are and, and what type of work we do, and then we'll look specifically at uh, kind of your projects and, and talk about those. So if you'll bear with me a few minutes, I want to run through some of our work and just kind of give you a sense of who we are and, and what we do. Uh, Ms. Connor, not in your way, can no, step no, over no, here no. be all right? Mm -hmm. We are PH&J. We're a, a firm that's been in Alabama, uh, started in 57, so we're coming up on 60 years old. I haven't been there the whole time, but uh, most of it. Um, we do all types of projects strictly in Alabama. Uh, a few years ago, we did a little work in North Florida and over in Atlanta, but mostly we stay directly in Alabama, and we think that's because it gives us um, better control over our projects and better service to our clients. We're close. We can be there. Uh, every project has a principal involved. So I'm a principal in the firm, and if we're lucky enough to be chosen to do your work, I'll be directly involved in producing the work. 
work, so the buck stops with me. Um, let's see if I can get this to run forward. Uh, this is just a slide. You've probably seen in your book. All this is in your book, so you can look at it later. But this just shows our founders and tells a little bit about the type of work we do. We do schools, um, colleges, uh, all types of government projects, um, really everything except for uh, retail and developer type work. We don't do residential. We did early in our firm's history, but we don't do residential work now. But everything else we'll do. Courthouses, you name it. This is our crew. Um, these are our field reps. We have uh, dedicated field reps that go out and look at the projects. They'll be on your site uh, weekly at least. Uh, we feel like these guys all come out of the construction industry. They are contractors. They understand construction. They're there to help the contractor get the project built. We think it's an important part of what we do because no matter how good our plans are, there are going to be questions in the field and we have to work through those issues and they're there to help that with that but also to protect your interest as the owner to make sure you get what you paid for. Just to, again, just to say that we work really in Alabama and we're all over the state from one corner to the other. And this is just saying that uh, we have uh, repeat clients. Uh, our clients hire us again and again and again, and we're very proud of that. We think that says a lot about what we do. We do, again, church work. This is Briarwood up in Birmingham. Uh, this is Holy Spirit Catholic Church over in Tuscaloosa, project we just finished a couple of years ago. Very nice project. Um, work at Auburn, that's an addition on Ralph Draw Library we did a number of years ago. You've probably seen it if you've been down College Street. Also at the University of Alabama, this is the Bruno uh, Library and Bashinsky Computer Center just off the quad. We've done probably 50 projects at the University of Alabama over the years. The RSA, Dr. Bronner's building in downtown Montgomery, we've done uh, six projects in Montgomery for Dr. Bronner, including his, his most recent one here, which was his, is his headquarters building. That's a neat building. Thank you. I've been in there several times. Thank you. We were very fortunate to be able to do that. That was really neat. Thank you. Uh, courthouse work, this is over in Bibb County. We did a little addition. You see that lower picture, there's an addition on the back of the old courthouse. We renovated the courthouse and did that addition. But got them some uh, stairs, elevators, and toilets in the building that they didn't have before. And this is a project in downtown Montgomery on Dexter Avenue. This is uh, for the Alabama Power Company. It's an old historic building that they wanted to renovate, so we did a renovation for them. Uh, up, at, uh, up at Auburn, uh, we've done a number of projects for, over the years at Auburn City Schools. This was an addition to the uh, junior high school, 20 classroom addition there. Uh, also, we've done three complete elementary schools for the Auburn schools over the years. This is Richmond Road, the most recent one. Up in Russell County, we did the Russell County High School, and we've done a, a number of other projects for them over the years. Uh, in Opelika, we uh, had of course, they, we didn't do their most recent work, but we did build the uh, Opelika Performing Arts Center up there, and they do regular um, seasons where they'll have uh, off-Broadway tours come through and, and put on a regular season every year in this in this facility. It's, a very, it's a, certainly a regional facility. Um, going back to Auburn, Auburn Junior High School, we did uh, an addition for them that was uh, their fine arts. It had uh, band, choral, and uh, art. And then we've done a number of these projects for the school system there, which are kitchens and multi-purpose rooms. The, the multi-purpose room can be used for PE. This is elementary grades. It can be used for PE in bad weather, uh, but the kitchen's attached and they can actually use that for a cafeteria as well. Uh, at the Auburn Junior High School, we did a, a media center edition, media and science center edition for them there. And then we'll talk to you about technical education because that's what we're here to talk about tonight. We do a tremendous amount of technical education in the uh, junior college post-secondary uh, system. I want to run a few through a few of those projects. This is up at Calhoun Community College up in Decatur. When Boeing moved in there, they needed a facility to train uh, workers for their plants. They built a four plant. And so we built this, this facility. You can see it has a bridge crane and five axis mill and a number of other things. Uh, just another shot of that. We did a little lab space there because they learned to do, they learned to make composite patches. Uh, they, that's part of the skill sets that they need. They also had some specialized welding and testing that they learned to do. 
also at Calhoun Community College. This was an the lower picture is an existing building that we renovated to become their visual arts uh, center. And the reason I show you that is because we did a complete TV studio in there. Um, and I understand that, you know, part of what we're doing, showing you is, is a video, a videography <coughs> suite. And um, so I just wanted to show you that we understand how to do true full-blown uh, studios. This building was located about 600 feet from the airport that had jets taken off. So acoustics was a big deal because in the middle of a production, you don't want a jet taking off or landing. So we had to acoustically isolate this room in this building uh, from that airport. Uh, another building we did for them, renovated some old shops and created what they call advanced manufacturing. Uh, they put in a, a soldering uh, manufacturing line there. And then this building we're real proud of, the building in the lower picture, it's the first lead classroom <coughs> building uh, in the state for educational purposes. And what they do in this building is train their uh, students on emerging green technologies like solar, uh, geothermal, um, rainwater harvesting, all manner of things. And the building incorporated all those systems as well. And then up there as well, we've done uh, their, their uh, math science administration building on the top, but also their nursing building on the bottom. And you'll have nursing in your program. Um, you see on the bottom picture there, uh, one of the bed wards, they actually had two bed wards in that building. And then we did a full surgery suite with two operatories, uh, as well as dental um, technicians, um, EMT, paramedics, uh, and built out for a radiography suite that they had not as yet, as yet populated. And then just some science classrooms that we did there as well. Up in Alex City, Betty Carroll Graham facility there, uh, which is a multi-purpose facility for the community, but also incorporated uh, technical training for robotics, electronics, pneumatics, and we built these spaces and all of our technical spaces we build to be as flexible as we can because we know that things will change over time. So we want you to be able over time to renovate and make changes as new technologies uh, come along. You see a few of the shots there showing some of the busways and that kind of thing. Cosmetology, we did one down at uh, LBW, uh, Little Ingby Wallace Community College, and also down at Dothan, I'll show you just in a few minutes. This is up in Valley, Alabama for Southern Union. We did them a technology building. I don't have any pictures of it fitted out, but uh, a big open space that had all manner of electrical power, air, that they could bring in different lines from industry, set up a line to train workers on. Also, they had modules for pneumatics, hydraulics, electricity, electronics that they could, could train on, motor centers, that kind of thing. This is down at uh, Wallace Community College in Dothan. It's a welding facility, very similar to the one that they have on their Spark campus here. Uh, we just completed this a year or so ago, and they're about to grow out of it. They're looking for money to try to expand this. They need about twice as much space uh, as we built at the time. As you can see, it's a fairly simple metal building. Uh, but looks nice and neat and works very well for them. And this is that cosmetology program. We took an old machine tool technology building, which was greasy and oily, and uh, turned it into a nice, bright, clean cosmetology uh, facility. Also for, the, for Wallace uh, Dothan, we took an old auto body shop and turned it into their industrial maintenance, uh, where they trained uh, men and women that were working in factories in terms of maintaining the, the plant, keeping the, the equipment operational. Uh, they have modules they train on there. We also have a small welding facility within this facility. It had about five units uh, that they could, could weld on. Up at Hansville, Alabama, welding is really <coughs> pulling up in Alabama right now. Hansville, Alabama, a couple of years ago, we went into their existing welding facility, raked it out, and rebuilt uh, an entire new facility. Uh, with new extractor system, uh, new booths, uh, the entire, entire system is redone. A number of years ago, we built, uh, designed the Alabama Fire College over in Tuscaloosa where they trained firefighters. Uh, we did the original building, the burn buildings, drill towers, of course that's the apparatus room there, and then came back and did a building a few years later for, uh, for EMS and paramedic training. 
This building is up at, uh, I was telling Dr. Hanchy about this, I hope he'll come up to see it uh, this fall. This building will be on line up at Southern Union of Hawaii. It's about 74,000 square feet, technical education. They'll be able to teach um, <coughs> injection molding, uh, machine tool, HVAC, welding, uh, automotive, uh, electricity, electronics, and robotics, and drafting all in this building and their truck driving schools in this building as well. Um, again, about 75,000 square feet. It'll be state of the art, and I hope you all will come up and see it. I'd love to take you through it. Uh, this is a building that we actually had the uh, pre-construction meeting on today. I was not able to go because I was coming to see you all tonight, but up in uh, Athens, Alabama, <coughs> this is the Limestone uh, County Career Technical Center. We just did it. 27,000 square foot addition there, very similar to what you're talking about. A little different program, some of the same. They do have uh, nursing and allied health. They have uh, what they call public safety, which is uh, police, fire, paramedics. Uh, and they have building technology, which is, is carpentry, plumbing, and then electrical and electronics, and also ROTC. So a very nice project that's just getting out of the ground. So this is up at Southern Union Wadley for their softball team. They have a very nice baseball field up there. The women, though, were playing on a what would look like a junior high school softball field. So they needed to build something for the women. And so we have a project underway right now. It will be complete in another month or so um, that they will be able to play in the stadium, smaller than the baseball stadium, but, but very nice. Uh, these are actually some renderings that David uh, had done initially and it will look very much like that. Over at the University of West Alabama, we've done a number of projects. We still do work for them just daily. But uh, we did just completed an addition to Homer Field House, which is their uh, training facility for uh, athletes, their weight training, etc. Uh, that, that project's now complete. Uh, the tennis complex. Uh, we did the original stadium and press box years ago. This is an old project. We did not do the the field, uh, but we have gone back and done work around the stadium. Uh, the women's softball field and practice fields. Up at Opelika High School, we did the stadium years ago up there. And a field house for them at the time. Uh, over at Alabama Southern in Monroeville, uh, baseball and softball uh, complex. We did a number of projects for them as well as, as their tennis. Um, at Huntington College, uh, a press box for their baseball team. And same thing, press box and concessions up in uh, Northwest Shoals for their softball team. At the University of Alabama, I designed this project a number of years ago for Sarah Patterson, the uh, gymnastics coach, to train her, her kids in. And they've done very well. Also, at the same time, on the back of Coleman Coliseum, we did a, a volleyball um, and basketball practice facility. The volleyball team has since taken it over. They call it the cave, and it's their home court now. And they, I think they do very well there. Uh, and now I want to talk about your projects a little bit and leave a little time for any questions that you may have. Of course, this is your, uh, this is your high school. And get my laser out so I can point a little bit here. Um, we'd be talking about the technical education addition going here and the multi-purpose athletic indoor facility uh, back here right right next to the stadium. So I want to go 
And this is in your books. It may be a little hard to see, but I'll walk you through it. Um, the existing building, again, if you recall, is, is here. We'd be connecting up right here. We would have culinary arts, and they have asked for a little restaurant uh, to go with that so they could either serve students or possibly the public. So we show a layout here for a, a small restaurant and a commercial kitchen type training facility but with plenty of space and then classroom space uh, back in here connected. It would all be one space uh, with an office and some utility spaces. Um, we've done each of these disciplines as a, as a suite type approach. In other words, the classrooms and the labs are all part of one area so when the student goes in, he can get to any part of that. Uh, next we would have uh, your criminal uh, justice and uh, we again have some storage space, uh, <coughs> lab, this is actually a data closet here, offices uh, and some classrooms. Uh, down here we have our ROTC, two classrooms that open off the corridor. They're connected by an interior corridor. You'd have a shooting range here, storage for uniforms, and a couple of offices for the officers, the, the cadre. Um, coming on back this way, this would be your allied health and nursing. Uh, we have a bed ward here with beds with uh, curtains, um, a supply closet, uh, and then a classroom located off of that lab and with some extra space in the floor just for different uh, things they may want to set up your, uh, and then the office as well. Coming on back, we would have a faculty toilet. The student toilets would be here on this side of the hall, faculty toilet here. Uh, this would be engineering. They would have uh, storage space and an office. And then agriculture again with the same type setup there. And then coming on down this way, um, we'd have uh, business education, marketing, this would be the uh, video studio here, and then back here we have a space which would be a meeting and multi-purpose space for the faculty, but also where your business and industry council could come in and meet, um, and it would have uh, media and uh, a break room area for the faculty. Um, jumping back into the studio for just a minute, we would have a uh, control room and then also off the car we would have a, uh, a video editing room as well. And then Dr. Hanchi had talked about the possibility of opening this wall up between these two spaces because he sees the possibility of doing a number of things uh, in this space being very flexible. And we're fine with doing that if that's what you want to do. We do have a concern, as I spoke earlier about the TV studio we did up in Decatur, Acoustics is a big deal in a studio. Now, you can get a good level of quality, but if you want to do truly professional level, you may want to think about having this opening, but the, the flexibility and the uses for that may outweigh. We can, get, we can get you a movable partition here that will do as well as a classroom wall. It won't be 100%, but you also administratively can sort of control what's going on on the other side of that wall, which will help with uh, sound sound transmission so that's kind of our a quick run through our thoughts about your technical edition it's about 26,000 square feet a little bit bigger than that um, any questions about that how many spaces are lined for the agricultural area? Uh, the lab itself is about 1400 square feet uh, the storage and all of the, the overall Suite is uh, probably a little over 2,000 square feet, but the lab, the open lab itself, is about 1,400 square feet. And I apologize, I'm going off memory, but I think that's fairly close. I'm sorry, you can't read this a little better. It's just not quite big enough to, to see well. There's a question I have, and maybe. Y'all are the ones that uh, answered, or maybe not. Uh, something that Angie, I'm sure, would want to know. Is once all this goes in, or once you uh, implement a building such as this, what kind of uh, electrical or power supply draw would we expect to occur? Uh, do you understand my question? I, I, I do, and it's it's a little difficult to answer. I don't know that I can give you a total lot 
right. kind of a number. Just ballpark. Something. Well, it, it's going to be more than a, just a, I say that, it really may not be more than a current classroom building would be of the same size. And here's the reason. Everybody these days has computers everywhere, and which is the big draw on, on electrical systems for classroom type buildings. This building it has a lot of open space. You have open labs. Now, if you're running, um, you know, some, some bigger equipment in, in agriculture, that's going to be a draw. But a lot of this space is, you know, in your nursing ward, you know, from a square foot standpoint, I don't think you'd anticipate nearly as much electrical draw probably as that equal space in classrooms. So I don't know that I can work on getting you that number. I don't have it tonight. I apologize for that. But I don't think it'd be tremendously different than what you would have for a classroom type building at the same size. Would this be a metal building? Or? Yes, sir, it would be. What we would propose is that you brick the front and turn the corners so it would match the front of your high school. But the rest of it would be metal uh, siding. Now, we would, we would probably want to run a brick band low just so weed eaters wouldn't get on the metal, but, um, but primarily metal siding on the back side and metal roof. Any other questions on that? We can, we can always come back to this. How, what would the estimated cost per square foot be on the uh, Per square foot, we'd be at about $106 a square foot. And that's going to depend a little bit on exactly how much equipment's in the contract and how that we make that to a good plan. <laughs> and you do believe that uh, what can be designed and built will match aesthetically with uh, the school? Yes, sir, I think so. Yes, sir, we can make that work. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, again, I propose that we brick the front to, to match the school. And we'll have a very low slope roof. The roof won't be much of an issue. As we go around the back, we can use a, a color on the metal panels to, to tie in. From the highway, from the from Lake Street, you'll, you'll never know the difference. If I'm looking at this correctly, that's at the front of the uh, present. Be a uh, high school, correct? Yes, sir. That's right. And that's right by the breezeway area? It is, yes, sir. Okay. Right in the breezeway. And how far would you say we are from the breezeway? Well, the, let me step back one. The end of the breezeway is right there, Mr. Hill. In other words, we didn't pull it up into that little corner where the, where the breezeway comes out uh, because your building now comes back from the road and turns out fairly quickly and you have some, uh, there's some mechanical units there. You also have some drainage issues right there in terms of roof water. So we pulled it away just slightly. Now we can connect that either with an open, uh, another breezeway or the same breezeway or we can build an enclosed corridor to get there, either one. It's not, not a problem and I think it's probably within the money either way. But, uh, we, for right now, we've shown it stepped away slightly. You'll save a lot of money if you don't get this building tangled right up into the, old, uh, the existing building. Means like by, by not connecting it, you'd save a lot of money by not connecting it? You will. Yes. If we, get, if we try to, to match up to this building all the way around, you're going to spend a fair amount of money trying to mitigate some of the existing conditions. We can certainly build right. an enclosed well, air conditioned car. No, that's a good clothes one, but you definitely need a breeze. Yeah. Well, that would be certainly at least a covered breeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. covered breeze. I, I really like the idea about the classrooms and the uh, everything's right there together for each area. Yes. Well, one of the important things that does in technical education, uh, particularly in something like agriculture, uh, where you may have students that are doing things that are a little more dangerous, you're going to want oversight from the instructor. And if he's right there, he can be either place, he's not having to cross the hallway, that kind of thing. It's, it's a very good concept. Uh, can I speak up? Coach Moore, is there anything on a multi the multi-purpose that uh, you see that you'd like to add to? Uh, 
So we can suggest you go. We ain't got to there. Okay. Uh, let, let me run through that real quick. I know I know y'all have got a big night ahead of you. Let me let me scoot ahead. Again, the, the multi-purpose will be right here behind the, the stadium. And let me uh, step one forward. Now I'm turning on you. The the I've rotated the plan. The stadium in this picture is up this way. Your existing weight room is right here. There's a little alley between the weight room and the, and the rest of the school building, which actually kind of comes around and back this way. There's some basketball courts out here and a little road between the stadium and our proposed location. Now, what we would propose is to build this uh, multi-purpose indoor training facility. You would actually have a covered breezeway that would come over from the building. It would have let uh, leave access into the existing weight room, and we would add on a little piece here that would be uh, for girls uh, changing and showers uh, and restrooms. Um, three coaches' offices, and you come on in here, and now you're in the big space. And this would include uh, your power lift stations along this wall, a 25 yard by full width football field that would be on out of field turf. Uh, and that could be for soccer, football, uh, whatever one to practice there. If you can see, uh, it doesn't show up very well, but we would propose to have four uh, batting cage nets that would be retractable. Uh, they, would, they would drop down when needed. And then markings uh, and stanchions uh, that could be inserted for uh, volleyball practice, and we would hold the, the roof up high enough to be able to, to actually have practice there. Uh, and then over here, we would propose on this wall a uh, soccer wall where uh, the uh, athletes could uh, practice against the wall. And also, you may want to put some uh, uh, inserts for, and we can certainly do that, for uh, soccer mannequins. They do a lot of drills now in and out around the mannequins, and that's certainly easy to do. And then back here on the, this end of the building, we would propose a uh, game day uh, locker room for a football team uh, would be accessed two places here and here and come in um, with lockers and then a central meeting area and then they would go out doors and over to the stadium here. We also would propose to have a, a room for a trainer with uh, four beds for uh, wrapping ankles and that kind of thing prior to a game. Um, a utility space with wash, commercial washer and dryer uh, and then on this side, some equipment storage, and this corridor would connect back to showers and toilets that would serve both the football team, but also could be used by these other students, and we'd have a door right here that would lock off the, the game day dressing area uh, from, from that corridor when it was not in use, so you would have control over that space, but uh, that way we now build two sets of restrooms and showers. We think this one would be about ninety five dollars square foot. <coughs> and and the thought is right now at least that this would be uh, heated and cooled. Uh, you may decide that you only want to heat and ventilate it, but right now we would our thoughts would, would be that this would be uh, air conditioned space. Um, we would probably use package units uh, over on this side that would feed in uh, to do that. Or anything you want to say about? Yeah, I just you have don't see, see four proposals tonight, but anything? Yes. Yeah, so what is the the depth of the from the turf to the wall as far as the power rack side? Uh, I think it's about. I believe it's about 15 feet clear from the edge of the turf to the to the, the mats and from the power racks. Would there be? Yeah, I see 14 racks. Would there be enough space for say 20 racks? Um, it depends on how tight you want to put it. I don't know that we can get 20 in there as it's shown right now, but we may be able to add a little length and maybe put some down down this wall possibly just without adding too much to the building. What's the depth there on the side? This way? Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think we're about uh, about five yards, about 15 feet from the, the okay. three yard out, out of bounds over to the wall. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Coach, I know, of course, board, you're going to see four proposals, but I think for a football coach, and I understand for band directors too, talking to Steve, 
the, having a, a facility with width is really as important, more important than depth, because of your, you work so much on your primer game, and if you want to throw your deep passes, you just turn it and, and go lengthwise the other way. But, uh, you know, a lot of facilities don't do a 53 yard wide uh, field, and I think that's important. Yes, sir. Opelikas is 40, uh, rubber to rubber. Yes. And uh, so they, this is very, it's good. It's 13 yards bigger. Yes, sir. Really, it's something I told you, we've talked. I know you got your drop down batting cages, which is fantastic. and. You actually got your soccer wall, but you actually have tee boxes and you can tee up your golf team and have them, you know, practice in there. Uh, it, would, it would be very versatile. You do just about anything in there. Great space for Special Olympics. Uh, you know, field day for the elementary kids if it gets rained out. So. Any other questions? Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the opportunity. We've enjoyed uh, working with your staff and getting to know them a little bit. And uh, we love the opportunity to work with you. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, bent or broken, at Ufala Flea Market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Well, good. Hello. Thank y'all for letting us be here. I'm Sylvan oh. McKee with uh, McKee Associates Architects. This is Neil Hughes, uh, who's part of our construction management team. Um, he's been with us about 13 years, and he's supervised over $200 million in construction since he's been with us. Um, first off, it's always an honor to be here. We thank you for the opportunity to tell you about our firm, what we do, and why we think we're the best school design firm in the state of Alabama. A little bit about us. Uh, well, first, let me go back. What we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about us. I'm going to talk about cost-effective design. I'm going to show you some specific representative projects um, that specifically deal with multi-purpose facilities and with career technical education. And then we're going to look at our designs for the um, two things that y'all are doing. About us, we're staff of 30 highly skilled employees. We've done over $900 million in school construction since 1991. Uh, we've worked for 86 school boards. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of that. But we do more school work in the state of Alabama for lots of different reasons. Um, we don't say this to brag, we put this up here for a reason of saying, I give people an example all the time. If you're new into town and your car breaks down, how do you find a good mechanic? You ask one of your friends, you ask the neighbor. So y'all all go to conferences, y'all all do things. I know Mr. Tyler and Mr. Bailey and y'all at school boards, y'all interact and talk to other boards and other people. We feel the best way to find a good architect is to talk to the people we work for, whether it's the folks in Union Springs, whether the folks in Pike County, Troy, Geneva County, Geneva City, any of these people next to y'all, and we'll show you a little bit of what we're doing now. Um, but we are Alabama's leading school design firm. The main reason we're Alabama's leading school design firm is because we have experience. Um, if Back to the example of the mechanic. If your transmission's broken, you go to a transmission shop. We don't work on a lot of churches, banks, all these other things that architects do. We are, quote, a transmission specialist, a school design firm. We can do school buildings faster, cheaper, more economical, and we know more about school buildings than any other firm. How do we do that? Because I'm more active than anybody else in the school business. What a great resource for your career technical, and I'll get into this in, in a minute, for your coaches when we talk about multi-purpose athletics, career technical education. I'm currently, and we'll go over this in a minute, I'm working on nine different career technical projects in the state of Alabama. That's nine career technical directors I've sat down with, talked design, how are you doing health, how are you doing ROTC, what are you doing in all these areas. So we have a very skilled staff in school design. What is our learning environment? It's 
State Department has regulations out now. They developed them about a year ago in career technical education of what they're going to see. I imagine all of our plans are going to be very similar because we all want to follow State Department guidelines. Breadth and depth of school design knowledge. What is the latest? What are we doing? How are we putting school buildings together? What are current school costs? Ability to control costs. If you're not bidding and active in the school market, you don't know how much school buildings cost. We have several similar buildings in design, under construction, and finishing up as comparable to what y'all are doing. That is the most cost-effective way and the best way to determine how much is a building going to cost is what is my neighbor building it for? What does it have different than what we're doing? So you must know the cost of systems and experience that goes into these buildings. What type of roof do we want on it? What type of mechanical system? How are we doing the electrical? How is the nurse's suite set up? There's some ways that we can save money. We have that breadth and depth of knowledge to bring that to y'all. You must know construction costs and trends in a variety of markets. We're very active in your market. We work in Troy, we work in Willow County, we've got projects in Phoenix City. So we're very active with contractors that would potentially come into your market here and bid on projects in you fall. You must know what things cost. Is copper real expensive? Are shingles real expensive? Are metal roofs real expensive? What are the things that are commodities that are going up in cost? What are the commodities coming down in cost? One of the things that used to really, really bother me is, as you would see in the paper after the hurricanes or after the tornado, well, we built a project and it's 30% over budget and there's a hurricane on We don't know what we're going to do. Well, in my opinion, the design professional should have been with the board and saying, the current market isn't going to allow you to build what you want to build. You either need to shelve this project or you're going to have to come up with some more money. We intrinsically track every single piece that goes into a school building, the type of window, the type of toilet partitions. What's cost-effective floor time? Do y'all know that red ceramic tile costs about five times as much as beige? Is that money that you follow wants to spend in a bathroom, or are you happy with a neutral earth tone? These are the types of things that we bring to the table when we talk to talking about micromanaging costs. I mentioned Neil. Proven construction administration. We know how to deal with contractors. We know how to handle contractors. We know how to keep a contractor on schedule and deal with the mass of stuff that comes in with the construction process. And we have been proven to do that. Now, proven cost-effective designs. This is one of the other major regions that we work for, getting more school boards than anybody else in the state. This is Alabama State Department of Education data. You can see the average cost. This is all the schools that have been designed. This is updated in April through Dr. Perry Taylor in the uh, state school architect's office. The average cost per square foot for a new high school in the state was 157. Our clients played 141. Middle schools 147, our clients played 128. Elementary schools 140, Key and Associates 114. So on average, our clients pay $20.77 less a square foot for their buildings and people who don't use us. I don't put this up here to brag. I put this up here because we don't drive decisions. I don't care if you put gold on your roof and build a gold dump. My responsibility to this board and to your maintenance staff is to say these are the things that are available to you. And when school boards get empowered to make these decisions, most of the time they choose what is the cost effective solution for their students. You don't really get into mechanical systems and structural systems and types of roof systems most board members don't. That's something for y'all to decide, not to us, whether you want it built out of metal, built out of wood, however you want these things to function. Those are decisions you make that have real dollar values attached to them. How are we going to do air conditioning in the multi-purpose facility? One of the things I told Mr. Tyler and Mr. Bailey said, we don't want to pay for air conditioning. Well, I've got real numbers that say it costs you more to heat and ventilate the building than it does to put air conditioning in because of indoor air quality standards. So there's lots of things that we go through when we go through the design process. And in the end, what you end up with is more space for less money. That's why we do more work than any other system, than any other architect in the state. Representative projects. I'll start with multi-purpose. Here's kind of a partial list as I kind of ran out of room. Now it's rolling, I don't know why, but uh, currently Winfield, Cordova are both under construction. Muscle Shoals just finished, uh, and Sheffield just finished, and I don't know why this thing rolling like that, but I'll talk fast while it goes. This is Winfield. This is a combination uh, football field house, 
While he's trying to fix that, that is Winfield. We may have to follow along in the brochure and flip back. Uh, that is the Winfield High School Athletic Facility. That is a total of a 30,000 square foot building. There's about 6,000 square feet of locker room, 24,000 square feet of indoor multi-purpose space. Uh, they're paying about $2.2 million for that facility. Um, it's currently under construction, scheduled to come online this summer. This is Muscle Shoals. This is a total of 36,000 square feet. Um, this also is a 30-yard facility with wage stations. Uh, you can see kind of the layout there and some pretty pictures on the inside of that. They have all of their football dressing rooms, football locker rooms, etc. around that building. This building came online this year. One of the very interesting facts about this multi-purpose building, they run 590 athletes through that building a day. 590 athletes. They take girls coming there in two different waves, boys coming there in two different waves. One of the things we've started doing is, is they have motorized batting cages that come down. We have volleyball standards that, that rest on the floor. So every single person in Muscle Shoals extracurriculars, be it band, be it cheerleaders, be it soccer, there's a soccer kickball that they have that does in there, but it encompasses every single athlete that goes into Muscle Shoals City Schools. It's unbelievable. I, I highly encourage you, if you're in that area, to go by that facility at noon and watch 115 girls work out at one time. We have positioned, if you go back to that picture, we have positioned the weights so that activities go on on the floor and activities go on at the weights at the same time. So if you're an athlete, whether you're in season or out of season, you come, you do your deadlift, then you're able to move to the floor area to do your calisthenics, running, speed, any of those types of things that go on. Um, the people in Cordova saw what was happening there. Um, we recently just bid and just actually started moving dirt on an indoor practice facility at Cordova. Uh, this facility cost a million and nineteen thousand dollars. It's only twenty yards, but the major thing we're seeing in athletics and the change in these indoor practice facilities is designing them for full width. That's a 52 yard wide football field plus 15 yards or 55 yards, 15 feet out of bounds, so that a player can run. If we're doing football, so a player can run full speed. You can tackle, you can do everything you want to do outside. What we found with these facilities is football never uses them. It's a workout facility, it's a weight room, it's a multi sport training space. Muscle Shoals took their band in there during the middle of the summer. Those band parents were the happiest they've ever been because their son went out in the middle of the heat in the middle of August. They could practice their formations. They could do all those different things in there. Some of the other multi-purpose facilities we've done, you'll see uh, Charles Henderson has a small facility there um, attached to their football field house. Uh, next up would be Hell City. Um, theirs is a 10,000 square foot facility. It only cost about $686,000. It's more of a traditional setup like you like Coach had at Opelika, like you see at Florence, um, like you see at Prattville High School, another one we did where the weights flanked the perimeter. They didn't really have a need to do indoor football. All of theirs was traditional weight training. We have since learned through talking to coaches to reorganize our space. This one was built about six years ago um, into a wider facility because it's a lot more multi-purpose for all of your athletes. Piedmont. Very interesting one. This one's 6,000 square feet, and actually the federal government paid for this. This operates as a storm shelter. They had pretty good weight facilities. They needed a place for kids to go and work out. 
This is actually uh, rated for 250 mile an hour wind. FEMA grant paid for this. They didn't pay for the floor and they didn't pay for the batting cage nets. So you can kind of see them there in two different situations of raised and lowered. Um, but a very interesting use of federal dollars to build a storm shelter on the side of the high school and also serves as their indoor multi-purpose facility that you see there. Um, Sheffield High School, we turned the keys over on this one last week. This was part of a two and a half million dollar project. The actual cost of this facility was 989000 We added on to their gym and built this in between their gym and their football field. Once again, a wonderful facility. They kind of like the design at Florence or Coach had it at Opelika where the weights are on the perimeter and that's kind of what you see there. But this project is just finishing up construction um, really as we speak. I think we have a final inspection next week. Um, now on to, do y'all have any questions about any of the multi-purposes? As far as we know, we're the only architecture firm in the state that has any under construction at this point. And depending on what you classify as Sheffield, they have three under construction right now. Why is that important? I know what they cost. I know what the turf costs. Because I have three bids that show me exactly what the turf costs. I know what the mechanical systems cost. I know what the nets and the top cost. I know what the, every little piece of those facilities costs. Current career tech projects. Anderson High School, we're renovating their culinary arts, spring garden, more out of the career academy concept into welding, ag, and home economics. That's a brand new building. Uh, we're doing some work in Escambia uh, County for culinary arts. Boaz <coughs> City, we're currently renovating a vacated cafeteria shop, ag shop for hospitality, health, and finance. Their hospitality program leads into culinary. I have to let I can actually get into the difference of that, but it's not a full culinary program. It is more of a restaurant training program, and that's some of the discussions we've had with him on which way you want your culinary arts program to go. Um, we're doing the same thing at Alabaster City at Thompson High School. Which way is the culinary going to go? Are we going to train chefs? Are we going to learn about food, wellness, ordering food, how to run a restaurant? Two different levels, two different designs of your culinary suite and they have a little bit different stackable career path you know for you to go to that next level uh, up to the junior college uh, renovating the health lab at midfield high school jemison high school is culinary arts some of our other career tech projects um, that you see just to show you the depth of our experience um, at hale county that project is under construction that we have 11 programs we're putting in in hale county phil campbell high school they have four programs Etowah, Albertville, Smith Station. Time does not allow me to fully dive into the ins and outs of each one of those projects, but we would be happy to provide you all more information should you desire why we did what we did in those programs. What I'm trying to show you with these relevant projects, we're very experienced with your type of construction. We're very experienced with the design of these facilities and working with your teachers, your educators, and then presenting those things to the board for your approval. Why are we doing the things that we're doing? Well, we've got some tangible examples of ideas that other people are doing. It's a great way to learn what's going on in education. Approach to your project. Um, I imagine y'all are gonna see this a lot, so. Uh, a couple things we've done. Uh, there's an aerial of your high school. Uh, there's your new career academy. I don't think this shows up very well on the TV. But there is a hallway and a connector to your main building. One of the things that I suggested in my first look was to enclose the front side of your building for security reasons. You don't want your students circulating out of the front of your school, out to the parking lot. We all know what they'll do, um, or try to do, I should say. Good administration, keep them straight. Uh, here is your new field house. We've also dashed in, and I'll show you this on a plan, a potential future addition to the field house. There's your stadium that may require you to relocate the road. But in general, there is your site plan of where the two buildings could go. There's some other places on your piece of property, but um, these two seem to be the best. First to the field house. This is your existing weight room right here. This is a connection back to your existing school. You can start seeing the back of some of your locker rooms right here. We develop a spline that brings you right into your field house. The area that you see here, your game day dressing room, your female dressing room, and your three coaches offices were all proposed to be in this first 21,000 square feet. 
whether we want the weight stations on this end or the weight stations on that end, it's a simple thing to fix. What we've gone ahead and master plan, we feel it's very important to not only look for today, but how are we going to do things in the future. We heard a need to possibly build new head coaches offices, have a central training room for all of your athletes, male and female, and then future meeting rooms and possibly some future either visitor locker rooms or some other locker rooms for some of your ancillary sports, be it tennis, baseball, <coughs> softball, you can kind of continue this um, pattern all the way down in this construction. This is a 21,000 square foot field house, uh, uh, I mean multi-purpose space, so we think it functions very well. The girls dressing would be off of one things we propose is this becomes a girls weight room slash girls dressing room. There's some girls weightlifting activities that they feel more comfortable doing in more of a private setting, be it stretchings and yogas and some of those types of things. This becomes a wonderful place to do that. That flows right into their dressing room and into their restroom that the boys can't get into. Uh, this would be the boys as far as the game day dressing room that allows coaches to stack up come in there at halftime, use this facility, and long term, if you ever wanted to add on... Okay, I'm sorry, I, I missed something. Like, show me where the girls' locker room is. The girls' dressing room is here. Okay, then where are the boys? The boys is here. And the boys flow into their bathroom, the girls flow into their bathroom. And the idea, one of the things we heard from y'all was the existing weight room becomes a mini girls' weight room, it becomes a girls' dressing room, weight room space, uh, potentially for them to do things outside of the view of the boys, so to speak. So, so the boys will have access from the field house, but the girls will have access from the hallway. Yes. Sir. The girls can come in this door right here to get into their dressing room right at the top of the yellow, <coughs> right there. They would come through the restroom to get into their dressing room. And one of the things, we could easily put a door into their dressing room from this side. Uh, one of the comments we heard from y'all is, is we want it to be difficult for the boys to get in there or vice versa. We could reverse those two functions should we desire. Um, but to make it a barrier there, <laughs> yeah, yeah y'all understand. Um, so that's kind of a master plan of your um, facility there for your field house. What could it look like? This type of construction really lends itself to metal building construction, steel construction. Uh, we always recommend putting at least some form of masonry up to two foot eight or four feet just for maintenance purposes. But we see the rest of this building being a metal building. We could certainly dress it up as much as you wanted to dress up. That would be a decision of the board. If y'all wanted to brick fully the building, we could give you a number on that and that's at the pleasure of the board, so to speak. On the weight stations, were they elevated or are they ground floor? They're on the same ground. Very similar to what you saw in the pictures, yes, sir. And the weight stations come with rubber mats, and it's a full, it's a full component of what is there. Um, I've actually sent Coach Moore and um, trying to hook him up with some people in the industry that we've run into as far as weight training and equipment to get an assessment of what you have where you want to go and how, what you may need new. I don't think that's necessarily part of this project or this budget, but that's for y'all to adjudicate. But the way weight training is going now, y'all know it's way, way different than it was when we were coming up. And so there's experts in the field that say, what am I doing with girls softball? How are my cheerleaders trained? All of the weight trees have different attachments. You know, it's all plug and play. It's like building kind of like a playground. How are we going to work them out? How are we going to do that? That's not my expertise, but there are people I hook up with, whoever the board deems to be in charge of athletic training, weight training, and how we're going to do these things. I think I read in the paper, y'all was hired a strength and potentially strength and conditioning coach. Great. How are we doing this? The way we see these things work a lot is during your athletic block, the girls or boys, your students come into the multi-purpose facility, depending on what, it, what sport they're in and what they're doing. They're given a workout. It's prepared there for them. They can change clothes, do that, then they get dressed for their workout. So if you're in season softball, you may be doing light training. Say you're a girl that plays soccer in the fall, well, soccer spring, but a girl that plays a fall sport. Maybe you run cross country in the fall and that's your only sport. 
you're given your workout when you come in the facility and the facility is functional enough and set up enough that you go you get your workout and you go do your designated workout based on where you are in your time frame of in season out of season what sports you play and the things you need to work on and it really really works very smoothly i would encourage y'all to visit Muscle Shoals or something like that. I don't know if that's the way they did it in Opelika or not, but it's it's absolutely fascinating to watch this herd of people move in there, get their workout, and do what it is, you know, whatever it is that they're going to do. It's really been an enhancement for a lot of school systems. And one of the things I ask is say, well, why are you spending all this money on athletics? Well, if y'all y'all have over 400, I think my number I heard, is that correct or wrong? that participate in some form of extracurricular activity that would take part of something in this facility. So that's where we're seeing a lot of people, while we're seeing a lot of people build these facilities. Okay. Right. Career Academy. Um, once again, we can move the pieces and pods around. Uh, this is a potential full plan of your Career Academy. This would be your link, and this will be real clear when you see my picture here in a minute. This will be your link back to the existing school. Criminal Justice Suite, ROTC Suite in red. There's your engineering or your pre-engineering in the purple. Your culinary, um, regardless of what type of culinary that comes, um, we may be able to shrink, shrink that program depending on the stackable classes that y'all as a board and y'all as a community decide to offer in culinary, hospitality, tourism, it's a pretty broad uh, field there. We have a large conference room here for up to about 25. I showed them around a giant conference room table. They could be in stacks, however you want to do that, for presentations, for faculty. Uh, once again, you have your TV production. Um, you have film editing, their classroom. This is their studio. You also have a marketing area there that has that retractable wall. Um, we did something very similar to this in Fairhope High School to have small productions, a little small mini black box theater, a little fine art space. Um, you're certainly available to do those things in that space. There's your business lab, health occupation, and then your horticulture there at the top. But it's, it's pretty, the way that the state has done it, they basically sent you out a floor plan and said these are the things we recommend. We sit down with y'all and we tweak that plan to accommodate number of students enrolled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whether you are going to limit students and how those things work. But it's a pretty standard type plan. How many square feet is this facility? What we have shown here is 23.7. And I've got an estimate of my facilities here at the end of my presentation. It's 23,700 square feet, um, which we think is very efficient. We've met all the minimum <coughs> standards. But once again, we need to sit down with y'all and actually design the spaces you know, some of them may shrink, some of them may grow. There's a lot of space here in your culinary depending on what path you go to. And lastly, uh, kind of a rendering of what it would look like. It, depending on which screen you look at and how you do it, I've printed this thing out on five different computers to say that brick is the same color as you follow high school, whether it shows it on the picture or not. It will be, you know, up to your decision. Our intent is to match the brick to the color of the high school. What you see here is this is the connecting link right here that ties back into your existing school right there. But this would all be your new construction. Um, just to break it up at the, at the corner of this curve, I thought it'd be nice to do a little pop-up with another set of doors if you wanted to get into the building after hours. Um, we started with a very simple building, something we say is very schoolish. Um, decent signage on the front. You follow High School Career Academy. Um, Simple construction leads to less construction costs. Simple rectangular building. We do have the little bump out here in your criminal justice and your culinary just to break up the front of the building a little bit. But this is a show place for you fall high school. This is going to be something that your community leaders are going to bring people in and say, hey, our kids know how to go to work. They're receiving the certifications and the industry certifications and they're leaving here and they're finding real jobs doing real things. So we think it needs to have a little bit of a presence on the front of your school not something outlandish. We're trying to match your architecture there, but it needs to have a presence and say, hello, I'm here. We're doing good things in the fall. So that's just one way that that school could look. We're open to design that however y'all want to design. Up next. 
Lastly, what will these things cost? I mentioned to you earlier that our average high school construction cost $142 a square foot. That encompasses gymnasiums, cafeterias, and spaces that are a little bit more expensive than typical classroom spaces. For budgetary purposes, 135 a square foot should be a good budget number on your career academy, giving you a construction cost a little bit below 3.2. Multi-purpose building, in my presentation, I put you the cost of Winfield, Muscle Shoals, Cordova, and Sheffield. Sheffield's a little bit different because it had a gym lobby to it. Past results is the greatest indicator of future cost. 68, 73, 72, something like that's what those facilities cost. Budget number of $75 a square foot. So there's a potential estimate on what kind of capital investment you're making for your children. Okay, go back to your rendering. Now, put that out again on the front, the very from the breezeway right there. That okay. There's the edge of your school. Right. And then that's where the driveway does a turn. No, but the, the first part of the building, what would that be? That's your uh No, no, back up front. Here? Right there. That's your enclosed hallway. That's that breezeway outside. That's the breezeway. When you come outside of the school and take a right like you're... If you come out of the front door and take a right, you walk with the tractors. Okay, that's close already. No, it's not. No. It's not enclosed. It's just the breezeway. It's open. That's you enclosing it. Yes, sir. Right. As, if I'm you wanted to save some money, you could make that a canopy. But one okay. of the things we heard for security reasons, student circulation, is to keep these students behind the wall walking on the front of the school so that they're monitored and they're not just walking onto a sidewalk and can bleed out here in the car and you know, your kids wouldn't do that I shouldn't say but uh, it's for security reasons and that's something that can easily be taken as an alternate if you don't desire to do it. And is the multi-purpose brick uh, in, in the plans? I, not in that cost. Um, I could give you a cost. The multi-purpose, we're talking about running brick either up to 2 8 the career tech is, obviously. Career tech, I've got bricked all the way around. Um, I, I think it's, y'all kind of, you end up with kind of a 360 degree view of that facility. Right. All the people going to the baseball, I know when football comes, that's where all your parking is. <clears throat> you know, I think that's a facility that, in my opinion, needs to have architecture on all four sides. Um, but we're happy to do it at the board's plan. What kind of roofs? We would propose to, uh, there's, there's two ways we can put this building together, be it a pre-engineered steel structure or depending on how much masonry we put in this building, we could use load-bearing block with wood trusses and shingles potentially, or we could do wood trusses and metal. Um, there's several different ways this building could be put together um, and we can give you all the different cost components of that. Most of the time, these type of facilities, um, we get the idea of people want a very industrious look on the inside, so you end up with a lot of exposed structure, exposed ductwork. I think y'all understand that look, you know, kind of very cool. You can use cool colors. It doesn't necessarily cost you any more money, but you end up with a very industrious look in that career academy, and those are things we would certainly sit down and let y'all lead us through what does this interior look like? But that would function very well with a pre-engineered metal building with a metal roof on the outside. So we appreciate, well, certainly appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. Do you have any questions on the facility? Uh, I'm okay. I've taught the facility before. I feel good about it. How many racks would the uh, that was 22. 22. 22. 22. And that's, I mean, you know, once we get in, it'd be, once he gets, if we can get the survey done, that may be something that grows or shrinks depending on what an expert in the weight training field, and I'll leave that up to your athletic director, what an expert says for a school of this size with the number of students you're going to participate, with these facilities, your participation rate is going to go up. There's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Your participation rate will go up. But what we need and how big the weight training area is, you know, that's something that we make an informed decision on based on an expert in the field of weightlifting, weight training, and what type of equipment we need here. 
So what's the what's the turnaround time with, with your? I mean, I know it depends on bidding and then if it's started. But typically for projects like this, it would take us it, individually be a little bit different. But we have enough staff to run these projects simultaneously. I would expect two to three months worth of design time on a normal schedule. We draw, we meet, we make decisions. Two to three months worth of design time. A month to be a career tech's probably going to take nine to 12 months to build at least. Field house you can get, or multi prop home field house is a bad word. They're not a field house. Multi purpose building you can get put up in six or seven months. Cordova, they got five, they got 150 days to do Cordova. Because there's nothing to finish. You throw up a metal building, hang the lights, put the turf down, and you're good. Um, you know, it's 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 not wall. You know, it's not a very complicated structure to put up. But what about the uh, heating and cooling and all that? You you know, you've given us some ideas that which we you, you kind of enlightened us, which was good. What, what what happened in Winfield is they didn't want to pay for air conditioning in the summer, and I certainly understand that. And I highly doubt y'all want to as well. The way indoor air quality states is, is when they didn't want to pay for an air conditioning, so I'll start there. They didn't want air conditioning. They wanted to do old traditional gym, louvers, and fans. Mm -hmm. Well, indoor air quality says when the building's occupied, you have to bring in outside air. So in the wintertime in Winfield, the code says you don't have to have air conditioning by code. You just have to have heat, and you have to be able to get the space to 68 degrees. Well, when you come inside and the louvers open on January the 3rd at 7 o'clock in the morning, you're bringing in ambient air all the way across your facility. Your heaters have to be so big that it costs more money instead of just taking a package unit and putting it on the ground and running the ductwork up. Then you're bringing the air through the equipment in before you're heating it or cooling it. Now, a way to satisfy the energy consumption is is we specify the equipment with what we call an economizer cycle. You can actually lock out the <coughs> compressor. So in the summertime, what you do is, is your maintenance personnel or whoever's in charge goes and they lock out the compressor. Then it runs on what we call economizer cycle. So it goes in the fan, blows it in, and blows it into the facility. You're still getting that fresh air that you have to have. You're just not using all the energy to cool the air to do it. One of the beauties of that is, is you can, through automated controls and through a control systems, you can choose a set point in the summertime, find a happy medium, 85, 86 degrees. These buildings stay pretty cool because of the amount of insulation we put in them. They don't really come on that much during the summer anyway. You can open the doors and do some other things, but that's what we learned in Winfield of a client that said, bid the thing both ways. And I can send you all the bid tabulation where it's got an easy alternate that says, delete the air conditioning units and put in louvers and fans. And if that's something you wanted to pay extra for, that's something, certainly your prerogative. But that's one of the things we learned in that project that's been very valuable for that board is they actually spent less money, got air conditioning, and still have the ability to control their power consumption should they have the desire to do that. So it's, it's, it's really a, an evolving process in, in how we heat and cool those spaces. There, if you have not seen one in action, there's a reason a lot of people, and I don't know if y'all saw the article on AL.com about the arms race, I am shocked by how many people and how many kids at these schools are actually using these facilities and the, just, the, just all the different things that go on in there across band, cheerleaders, all of the different athletes that are using it. It's, it's really something to see. Uh, and I applaud y'all for looking at it because it's, it's something that really has enhanced the places that have built these uh, a good bit as far as their athletic experience at their school. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Well, thank y'all. We, 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 we appreciate it very much and we, we'd be honored to serve as your architect. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to You Follow Vapor. Save thousands of dollars and quit smoking at You Follow Vapor in the Sable Ridge Center on 431 South. You Follow Vapor, a safe way to stop smoking. Try it for free at You Follow Vapor.
students, one about to graduate from Fall High School on Friday, which is uh, good to see, and Victoria uh, is now going to be a junior next year, which is hard to believe, so mm -hmm. I'll give you an update on the Thunder and Herd another time, but I uh, want to run through this uh, very quickly. Uh, James, if I'm pushing the right button. Pull it down. Okay. Uh, just real quickly, the firm overview, I'll tell you a little bit about Bill and Mills and Kayla, the firm that I'm with. Obviously, my office is here in Fall. Uh, I'm between uh, job sites all over the place. Uh, a lot of my particular production crew is in the Montgomery office. I work in the Birmingham office, and the Nashville office, depending on the project type. But basically, my uh, realm is in this geographic area. So, um, uh, one of the largest aid firms in the Southeast, uh, huge firms, an amazing city growth. Bill Wallace, an old classmate of mine, called me probably uh, 15 years ago. So when you come to work with you just joined an engineering firm, I said, no, I don't want to move my gun. And so every year you call, I said, we're growing. And uh, so finally, about 10 years ago, I said, why don't you stay in your fall and work with us? I said, I can do that. So I'm committed to being here. Uh, we are uh, very comfortable here. So uh, that's how the fall <coughs> office came into being. Started as an engineering firm in 47 <coughs> and uh, became architectural services in 86. And now we're the largest architectural firm in the state. And uh, it's been fun watching it grow. Our offices are scattered out around the southeast, uh, uh, but primarily in our geographic area is mainly Alabama. Well, we've got some forces in Georgia and Carolina and some in Tennessee. We concentrate mainly on the Alabama uh, zone. Uh, one of the top 25 Casey Crudup design firms nationally. Uh, do a tremendous amount of school work. Freddie Lynn, who I work closely with, uh, is a fascinating guy. He's probably met Freddie through ASD. Uh, he is uh, committed to education, uh, numerous design awards on different design projects and project types that we've done through the years. And we work with 55 different school systems throughout uh, this state as well as others, as well as uh, you can see some of the guys <coughs> we've had there, small techs. I'm leaving a copy of this electronic before you all don't want to look back at anything. Uh, but certainly Fall City Schools has been doing work here for the past eight or nine years and we'll get a few of the project times. Also a lot of higher education work. And I'll show a few projects quickly of uh, the groups we're working with. We're doing the new uh, nursing facility and healthcare facility down at uh, Wallace and Dothan. Uh, we're finishing up uh, a project of mine is the new Econ medical complex in Auburn. And so it's fun to be working with the area. We're very schedule focused, uh, we're security focused, safety focused student focus, which is the core of what we do, and we talk about especially um, K-12 through work, and certainly want to take care of clients in any way that we can. It's uh, a lot of different the capacity we have, we have to have these folks in-house, whether it's a landscape architect, whether it's our civil <coughs> uh, we now have electrical engineering within our office, and another thing that may come to be on this particular product is the culinary area where we have actually kitchen designers and a culinary department within the uh, office as well. This project team that are working on these projects would primarily the point man would be me as the project architect. It's a little different and then also do contract administration. Uh, and it's uh, something that kind of surprises clients at times. Uh, for instance, the VCOM project in medical school at Auburn, the fellow that heads that up said, now who will look after the construction? I said, I would. <coughs> He said, well, I, I, I want you on that job site. I said, I'll be on that job site. And the university architect sent me an email last week. He said, I can't believe it, but I've just gotten your 200th inspection report on this project. Uh, so that's that's critical in my mind, something we did. David Hughes would be working on production <coughs> with Hillary Morgan, uh, would be assistant. She's an associate uh, AIA intern. Melanie Lane's interior designer that we have involved in this project as well as Dave Clark, who's our culinary designer, and John Brickett, a 
fascinating and talented landscape architect that we also bring to the mix. Brad Johnson out of uh, Dothan would probably be our structural engineer. Uh, he's done other work for us here in New Falls City School System. And then on the mechanical side, we would use uh, Gordon Morris, Jack Morris, and the electrical engineering we would probably do in-house. We're open to any other consultants though that you would have the preference for, but this right now is the theme as we uh, look at it. Uh, don't break this. approach is pretty straightforward to accommodate the needs uh, from the program and for the program the information we have at this point what we'll show you tonight is very schematic uh, because we want your input and your guidance on that also to meet the needs of the entire school system so we look at this in a holistic way as we go through it uh, designed for the school by the school we'd like to have the input from your personnel that you want involved in this project so that we can get that input and then also provide a safe and uh, nurturing environment and what we do, uh, maximize all the resources that we have, uh, both within the school system as well as with our firm, and also to accommodate the unknown. There are always surprises you get into a construction design. As far as the project experience goes, some things you listed here, these over the past few years of the projects we've done here uh, for the policy school system, from uh, heat and air conditioning retrofit to the re-roofing project at the high school, uh, this board office and this renovation of this facility, the current renovation going on, parking lots, um, the commons renovation, the bathroom renovations at the high school, uh, all in the, the enclosure, the play gyms and all that work, the things that we've been able to do for you and we appreciate that and hopefully that uh, has gone well. Just a few, that's, that's a little different than from what it was when it was a brown quarry tile and it turned into the swimming pool at the high school, so that was good to see. The bathrooms are a little dated, and now they're up to speed, so just some quick shots of that. Uh, we do a ton of uh, educational work. I'll just run through a few of these to show you. I think some of the interiors are very interesting. It may ring a bell with you that we, uh, uh, through the interior side, get Melly involved is, is very valuable. And also the culinary arts, Auburn High School's culinary department, that was their existing. This is their new after we got through with that, helping them with that facility. We've done it down in the county, uh, here, there, in the Army Central High School. Same thing with the culinary <coughs> arts program, so that's just one facet. On the um, medical and nursing side and health care, we know that's something that's part of this project as well. Uh, we've done them both at um, technical colleges, some high school, and I mentioned other facilities we're working on with uh, Wallace and with Alvin, which is a huge. Uh, uh, medical <coughs> complex. This is the Wallace. Uh, it's square footage. It's about 100,000 square feet. Uh, it is a, uh, we just uh, did the project, about an $18 million project. Uh, pretty good square footage cost, and that's going to be the end of what you're doing, uh, doing that program. This is a shot actually I took uh, Saturday of the uh, VCOM project in Auburn. Uh, hopefully, we'll become a landmark building for them, and that'll start the new medical program as well. The lab space. Another specific project type is this field house. <coughs> We've done several of this type where we look at practice facilities for athletics, and so we've got some of those in the quiver as well. Um, Auburn University did their field house and the work associated with that, and so they use a pretty straightforward <coughs> metal building types with synthetic surfaces, the weight equipment, and so we look at your program and see how to rig that out. That's all in the room as well. Uh, Alabama State's football complex, we did that for them several years ago and worked closer with them. Interesting civil engineering project. Uh, we worked on that, some of the interior of those. As far as construction administration goes, um, we try to have a strong presence on the site, but communicate well with owners. I think that uh, hopefully if um, uh, James and John and these guys, when they need to call me, they can reach me and uh, we'll be at the job site. But we take a team approach. Uh, continue to monitor uh, the project and uh, generate field reports, uh, which you see a typical field report here. I think this particular field report was from the um, high school toilet renovation last year. It's a pretty compressed project. I think this was report number 48. It wasn't the final report. But I wasn't there every day, but it was close to every day that we dropped in just to make sure things were going well. Uh, 
to be quickly, I know we've got a very short time frame, show you what our thoughts are on how we might cobble this together from the program understanding we had of how we may fit this onto the site and uh, some of the space and square footage and projected costs that we uh, have, have run for you. And some of this may appear a little small. The first one, which is the um, uh, athletic structure, uh, we're looking at that being located as a attachment to the existing weight room. I know in some of the presentations you've already seen this is a pretty large structure. We'll talk about the square footage of this. Uh, and as we look at the floor plan, uh, we see coming into the existing weight room having a toilet bank added on. And toilet counts we've gone through, we think this number is correct. It will be driven by the final square footage as an occupant load. And while there has been talk about some separation with the existing weight room being used for females and having a bathroom for that, we've made a connection between these from the female side so that they can enter into the new facility without just having to go around outside, but the males cannot cross over to the female side. They're kind of segmented over into the new facility because they don't need to be in the ladies' weight room. Uh, and so the general concept is it's a large open structure. We have an AstroTurf type surface. All our weight equipment would be on the west side over there against the back wall. We have a small entry vestibule so that you don't have footballs and other things hitting you right when you come through the door in uh, a large structure. We did not draw any exterior elevations of this because it's going to be interesting how you handle the mass and how we handle the exterior fenestration. I think it would be a function of money. Is it metal siding? Is it a combination of brick and metal siding? Is it one face masonry and the rest metal? We can look at that and decide that it'll probably be driven by the budget of the dollar amount that you want to spend. But pretty straightforward building is a large uh, metal building structure is, uh, is what this is. So we see that being located over on the football stadium side. Now, the new uh, other facility uh, that we are pulling in here, as we look, would be right up near the front parking lot. And we looked at this location, we'll look at the four fans in just a second for this particular structure, but we also uh, would throw out that you may want to consider even putting it off the side swing on the back. Something to think about. Just because the connection could be a hard connection, uh, there are pros and cons to either approach. But backing up, this certainly shields view of the shop area and the ag area, but you've got a little more separation between those buildings. And so, uh, food for thought. This floor plan, I hope you can see it well enough, and I'll get over here so I can read the text as well. Um, we, we start, in, in program-wise, uh, it, it's your full program. And I won't go through it, but the ROTC segment over here in this lower corner with the, uh, the, the range and their classroom spaces, our culinary arts, the uh, uh, agricultural aspects are more toward the left-hand side so they can back out and get into the drive. Uh, we get further into the healthcare side of things up at this top quadrant. The classrooms associated with those as well as across the hall. Uh, your meeting rooms, faculty spaces. And so it's uh, pretty much true to program uh, what, we, um, what we were given square footage wise. We'll look at the total square footages on that. Uh, we can uh, get your paper copies of this, but basically that encapsulates your program. We're also showing the front entry on this instead of just the side tie in. So, if you had an instance where you need to use this at a certain time, then we'll have a whole school or have that connection. We can treat it as a separate building, uh, which in a way it is, but not have to come in the side until we actually have a front door to the facility, is the way we're looking at that. Uh, this gives you a little sense of scale, elevation. I want to show you from the front what you would be seeing if we mimic the architecture of the existing high school, the top drawing shows that existing. You see the gym on the right and the uh, shop building, the ag shop on the left-hand corner. As we pull this new facility in, you can see it's going to stretch it out laterally a good bit. And so that just gives you a sense of scale this overall uh, structure size. Uh, cost of the project, uh, we worked everything off a of square footage basis. On the uh, Technical Education Center, it's about uh, 24,700 square feet that we've come up with from the program that we've seen uh, and put a range of pricing. Uh, the middle pricing around $130 a square foot on this facility is what we think it will probably take to build it. Uh, if you take the cost of that uh, and add the architectural engineering fees from the building commission schedule, 
Uh, we're, right now we're estimating that this tech center would be between $3.1 million and $3.67 million for that particular project. So those numbers are, are there. As we look at the... Uh, Mike, let me ask you on the tech part. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the the uh, cosmetics on the outside of it, what, what is that? Is that, is that all brick? Is it it's, a D-wall brick up in the no, middle? On, on this, on the building out front, it would be all brick. Now, we have a single slope metal roof, so from the front of the school, it's going to look like the rest of the school. Um, if you go to the back of it, you'd still see pink brick or brick in detail the same as the rest of the high school, but it would be similar to the, um, uh, the auto shop over there where you've got a single slope metal roof heads to the back so that we don't get in the situations we have on the main school. We've got a flat roof and we've got a dual last or built up roof system, which is a pain to maintain. We're proposing we have a metal single slope roof on this facility it would be pretty straightforward. But from the street, from the side, it's going to look like the rest of the, the structure. On all four sides, though, are you proposing yeah. brick for the front or brick all the way around? Brick all the way around this building uh, because it uh, is going to be right in the front door. And so that's what we're seeing right there. On the other building, we'd probably look at bringing brick up at least to a knee wall height just to protect that metal siding. Uh, again, once you see the massing of that, you may say from the stadium side, we may want masonry on that. We can price it and you look at it, look at the dollars and cents and see what suits you best. It, it's a large mass of it. it really is. It's a large metal building. It will not be as high as the gym, but when you look at the height you have to have for doing what you need to do with sports, it gets pretty vertical. And so um, that's where, uh, and you'll see the square footage cost, while they're not as much, it's still a, uh, it's a sizable structure. Break, this thing and break it somehow, Jim. Well, the multi-purpose sports facility, we're looking at a range between we think eighty to hundred dollars a square foot on that. Um, the reason sometimes you can get a metal building of that type for around that seventy-five dollar range, but by the time we have the bathrooms and toilets and those supports and the air conditioning, understand this is going to be uh, a conditioned area then that ups the cost. So we're thinking it's going to range somewhere between 1.8 to 2.3 million including fees on that project. So those are our gut feelings just on the estimating of that as we uh, as we see this. So uh, <coughs> it is what we, what we have. And I've run through that quickly. I think uh, one last thing. James, I'm breaking this. I'm <laughs> We think we've got a proven performance with y'all the banks. We appreciate the work. Um, certainly uh, local, uh, family certainly involved. We've all seen the school system plan to be for a long time. People ask me when I'm going to retire. I said, I, I don't see that happening. Uh, I, I hope it does one day. I've told my children that Kath and I are going to spend a month and a half a year with them in rotation once they get out somewhere. But that's, that's down the road. So I'll be working here for quite a while. Um, I know our firms asked me if, uh, don't you want to move here? This and I'm good where I am. I'm going to be in your father, so uh, we're committed to your father. I think we've got solid design experience, not just in uh, typical architecture, but these specific project types. We're being a pretty strong team to the table uh, in the work we can do. We're committed to construction oversight, and we're certainly uh, still a growing firm, which is good to see. Uh, it, it's been fascinating watching our firm as well. Bill Wallace who started our practice with one of my groomsmen, and uh, he is uh, a tremendous businessman. But it's true, it's what our old business professor told us. He said, if you're not growing, you're dying. And that's true of a lot of things. And fortunately, our firm's still growing. Uh, we just um, uh, purchased another interesting firm over the past week in the Montgomery area that's going to help us in the educational cycle as well as sports facilities and so it's it's, uh, it's fun to watch, fun to be a part of it as a strong team, something that uh, we're committed to. So uh, <coughs> with that, things I've broken I've still got a 35 millimeter slide projector with, with architectural history programs I give, and I bring it, and I, I understand that push button that works with these. So with that, I know that's a quick run through. If you need printed copies of anything, our floor plan approach, but basically what it is from your program information that we receive, these are the layouts we came out with. Certainly they can be mixed, changed, and the size, but overall the square footage I think are pretty accurate. 
And uh, so that's what I have to present for you today. Just want to leave it up to <coughs> questions or anything that y'all need to ask me. Was the drawing of the high school, was it connected to the existing high school? We, we weren't sure. If you want to connect it, you can. Right now, we're, we're under the pressure that it's just a couple of walkway connections. If we want to make a hard connection, we can. There's a lot of separation between that front. And when you go outside the guidance area, that is just a pothole. There's nowhere to take water on that west side of the site. We have no storm systems. That's one reason we look at that back location as well. Because if you remember when we did the parking lot repaving project, that was always soupy in that particular piece of property. We now have a concrete plume that's worked pretty well. This building's going to be right on top of the concrete plume. And typically we'll say, well, we'll build a storm base and we'll pipe that water out. And that's going to be an interesting question and quandary. Where do we take the water? So it's tricky. It can be done, but it's going to take some head scratch. <coughs> so that's separated more just because of the flag area and that drop off and because of that structure is pushed further west. On the back side of that property, if we were to make that tie in around uh, the science area, you can almost make a direct connection. It's flat back there too, but may be able to handle what a little better. Something to think about and look at. That's one of the studies we helped you do and just food for thought that we put out there. I think you're on your uh, the sports facility side. It, it's pretty straightforward. Now we've got some sewer lines and things coming out of the back. We have to be careful we're to work around, but it'll fit. It's pretty well in there. It's probably a good use of that space. So uh, not, not, a, not a bad choice at all. And it screens. I mean, it's going to be a large building. It's going to be tough to dress it up without spending a ton of money. And so that kind of tucks it away and hides it a bit, which is helpful. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions or if we need to get you to print materials, I'll be glad to do it but electronically. So it's a little easier and uh, we can uh, get you whatever you need. So, so you'll send that. You send that you need anything else? You'll send that electronically. You have a copy right there. James has that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it to you. But he's got that. Yeah. We'll pick you up. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mike. You, Thank you. It. We'll see you. We'll take this cap and the bruise something. <laughs> Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, bent or broken, at your fall flea market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Again, we're with Bornheim Mixon Architects. 
We'd like to start by giving you a little bit of information on our firm. Sorry, I'm not used to this control. Everybody, everybody in the United States. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, we've been incorporated since 1983. We've been um, operating for 32 years under the current name, and in that time frame, we've completed over 750 projects, valued <coughs> at 30, 314 million dollars. We've worked all over the state of Alabama. We currently have projects as far north as Athens, Alabama, and as far south as Mobile. We are a small little firm. We are located here in Eufaula, but uh, we handle a lot of work, and we work hard, um, and we'll work hard for you. We've worked with a lot of universities and school systems over the years. Some of those two include, of course, Eufaula City Schools, Troy City Schools, um, Auburn University, University of Montgomery, um, University of Alabama, University of Birmingham, just to give you a, a few. I just can't seem to get this thing to work for me. There we go. Okay. Our architectural team is made up of four members. Frank Mixon would be serving as the principal in charge on this project. I will be serving as your project manager. Ted Hicks is over our contract document production. And Savannah Dunson will be serving as the interior designer. Our proposed consultants for this project include our civil engineer, uh, which is Barrett Simpson. This is Bill Barrett. He's representing them this evening. <coughs> they do have offices here in Eufaula. Our structural engineer is Henry Wright, located out of Dothan. Our mechanical engineer is Jackson Engineering, out of Dothan, Alabama. Electrical engineer is Mills Conley, out of Montgomery. And we have a specialty consultant included on this project for the Career Tech building, uh, for the Culinary Arts Suite, and that would be Restaurant Design Services located here in Eufaula. Before we get into the proposed uh, layout for your two projects, we'd like to go over some projects of ours that are of similar scope. This is a poultry science building located at Auburn University. It is um, a $16 million project, and an interesting component about this project is it has a biosafety level three lab. It is um, one of the first in the state of Alabama, and what they do in this lab is they um, do research on ex exotic agents such as bubonic plague and uh, smallpox that are deadly to the human species. And so this has very, very um, mechanical systems are very complex and they have a lot of redundancy fans so that at any time, there will always be negative pressure in this, in this laboratory. It has 46 teaching labs. This is a photo of one of those. Here's a photograph of one of the classroom environments. This project also has a sensory lab. They call it a sensory lab. Basically, it's outfitted with commercial kitchen equipment. And the students come in here and prepare food. And then they will pass it through. Um, through to a basically a person on the other side that will critique their food. This is a project we just completed last year. It's the new marketing and engineering offices for Humminbird Debt Finder here in Eufaula. It's a 10,000 square foot pre-engineered metal building and we just found out on Friday that we received a we came in second on a design award for this project so we were glad to find that out. This is a photograph showing you what one of the engineering labs looks like. <coughs> this is a 21 chair dialysis center in Springville, Alabama. Um, we are also currently working on an infirmary project for the state of Alabama valued at about 3.5 million. It's including an ER trauma hospice suite, dialysis suite, um, dental lab, and also it has a 21 patient bed unit. We've also done athletic facilities around the state. This is the Aquatic Center for the University of Alabama. We completed the first upper deck addition to Bryant-Denny Stadium, University of Alabama. 
We did the renovations to the Sewell Thomas Baseball Stadium. And we completed the design for the new girls <coughs> softball stadium at the University of Alabama. Now these are just a snippet of some of the projects that we've done and you're more than welcome to look in the folder to see some of other projects. But now we'd like to present to you how we can make your vision a reality. We've given you two schemes on the athletic complex. This is scheme A and this is based on your uh, program requirements. We've sited the building directly across from the football field and it is going to wrap the existing weight room. The exercise area is the full width of a football field, 160 feet by 25 yards. Prior to doing the design, we um, made a site visit to Opelika High School, with, which recently completed um, an athletic complex, and we talked with Coach Blackman, who was very insightful. Um, he actually did the design. He had a, I mean, he was obviously very heartfelt in, in the design of this building, did, spent a lot of time. He did it actually on graph paper and gave it to his architect to draw it. So, I mean, he poured his heart out into this building, and you could tell that as he explained several um, very important things that he told us we really need to consider. He talked about the roof structure at the center point needs to be 32 feet above the finished floor for the passing of a football. He talked about the turf. Uh, he highly recommends Shaw Sports Turf. And here's a sample for you to take a look at. He also talked about um, the lighting that it really needs to be considered indirect light where the light fixtures point up at the ceiling it'll be a white surface so then it reflects down on the the playing surface and so that's what we call indirect lighting and what that does is it prevents glare in the player's eyes we're going to come back to Opelika High in just a few minutes but I'd like to go back to our proposal um, the exercise area we're wanting to maximize it for different sports so we have four retractable batting cages, a soccer wall, um, volleyball, let's see if this will work, this is, well it didn't, this is a, A video actually to show you how the retractable batting cages would operate. They're motorized, but they will load. There we go. We provided 20 weight stations. And there's different configurations for that. This particular one, as you can see, has the bench on the opposite side, um, and it takes up a larger footprint. Opelika High has a customized unit built for them where actually the, the bench pivots, and so it takes up a much less uh, footprint and is really efficient on space. So we would recommend this unit. I got some pricing on uh, the weight equipment and BSN Sports gave me a price of about $79,000 for 20 weight stations and 500 pound weights per station. And so we would recommend that the board elect to put that um, not in the contract so that you're not paying overhead and profit on that. You could um, directly purchase that from the supplier and have them deliver that on site. We have a 50 occupant dressing room with a projector for review and plays. The entry into the men's toilet facility is directly off of the dressing room so that we can restrict access into, that, into those facilities. The women's restroom will be accessed off of the women's weight room, which will renovate the existing weight room to be only for women. 
so again we're restricting gender access into both of those um, facilities showing two offices in the green that would overlook the football field and the remaining area is electrical mechanical and storage this is a bird's eye view of what that could potentially look like A perspective and you can again see that we're wrapping the building um, we're taking this is a sailor course this is the existing weight room so we're going to wrap that this is the new facility this is the dressing area and then the pre-engineered metal building pre-engineered metal building the metal uh, panels would match the brick so that it matches the canvas this is the back of that facility there's the storage rooms. We're uh, putting those as a single story, single slope, and that's we don't want to pay for the volume for storage, so that's why we've opted to do that. So there won't be any brick and barbie told of metal? Down there. No, no, no. There, there will be. Let's look at that. Um, this is a, a four-foot-high water table, basically, for maintenance at the base, and then above that, we go up to 25 feet to get that um, that pitch in the center to be 32 feet so our walls would go up to 25 and then the dressing room would be brick on the single story we would just do the brick to match the existing campus so again the, the weight room the existing weight room the dressing rooms those are all single story and then we have our vaulted area for the exercise to give you an idea on the cost estimate for this project, it's 21,920 square feet. Um, it's coming in about $86 a square foot. So this project would run about $1.8 million. Um, our design fee would be based on the direct construction costs and the Alabama Building Commission has a fee schedule for that that's published for the state. This would be classified as a group two building type. And so the design fee would be 5.9%. So to give you an example, if you would take 1.8 million multiplied times 5.9%, the design fees for this would be $111,000. We would offer the school 5% discount off of that, so we would save you $5,500, reducing our total fee to $105,000. So again, a savings to you of $5,500. We wanted to look at an alternative approach so this is scheme B at Opelika High School. They have um, all the offices on the second story so that they overlook the exercise area for filming and for observation purposes. So this is the coach's office overlooking the exercise area. The conference room. So everything basically on the first floor is going to remain the same. We still have the exercise area. The batting cages, soccer wall, volleyball area, the weight room, weight stations all remain the same. Dressing room, our toilet facilities. We would provide one office on the ground floor for supervision purposes. And um, again, we've got the equipment storage, mechanical, and electrical area. So how this works for the second floor is basically this is a single story. This is the existing weight room. Uh, that is going to be your dressing room and this is equipment storage. So your only two-story component is in this portion of the building right here. And that would provide you a head coach's office, a conference room, and two assistant coach's offices also with toilet rooms up there. And also observation areas for them to oversee the action that's going out on the exercise area below. Here is again a bird's eye view of that scheme. So you can see here we have a single story, that wrapping again of um, the existing exercise room. This is the dressing room. We're going to bump up to a two-story height space for the offices and then we would have our pre-engineered metal building. Um, this is an entry shot, what that could potentially look like. And 
The dressing area and the offices is going, would be conventional framing, uh, bar joist, um, conventional foundations, and then we would again go to the pre-engineered metal building for the exercise area for economy purposes. So for scheme B, this is a little bit more square footage for those offices, so we're looking at 25,000 square feet. It's going to run a little bit more per square foot, $91 per square foot. So this is $2.2 million. Again, our design fees based on the direct construction cost and the fee percentage in group two is 5.8 based on that cost. And again, we would offer you that 5% discount again. So we have savings of $6,600 on this, reducing our fee to $125,000. Would this facility be cool? Yes. <coughs> If we can switch gears a little bit to the Career Tech Center, we're proposing to um, site this directly beside the main entrance to the high school. Right here is the existing gymnasium, which is anchoring the entry point. And so on the opposite side, we're going to put an anchor of the Career Tech building. This is an existing walkway where we're going to tie in to the existing building. There's a bank of lockers right there where you take those lockers out. And we put a double door in right there for our access point for the student's entrance. The formal entry would be off of the drive located right here. And if we walk down the corridor, the first suite we would come to is a culinary arts suite. It would include a cafe a kitchen for demonstration purposes, uh, culinary arts lab, utility space, office space, and supply area. It is sited in this location because it can take advantage of the existing cafeteria and a uh, kitchen that's currently on site. We can use their can wash, their dumpster pad, so we're not doubling up on those requirements. One other thing I'd like to point out with the Culinary Arts Suite is that um, we will provide to you at no additional cost a specialty consultant to design this to meet all the state requirements. Uh, Restaurant Design Services does that for schools throughout the state of Alabama and we would include that to you at no cost. Next component is the toilet rooms and mechanical <coughs> centrally located. Their ROTC suite have the rifle range, a large supply area, two offices, and two classrooms to accommodate 20 to 25 students. The criminal justice suite is next, and it has a criminal justice lab, two offices, a supply area, and two classrooms that would house 20 to 25 students. The agricultural suite is next. It's got an agricultural lab, supply area, a lockable tool room, and also an office. So would it be it would be sharing when you said the criminal justice has two classrooms? Yes. Would that be a shared classroom with the agricultural? No, sir. Um, they have their own suite. Basically, this is the criminal justice suite, so they have two classrooms and their own lab. Uh, the agricultural lab, we weren't aware that they needed a separate classroom. Brandon, but, because of, excuse me, two instructors? Yes, that program, program has just uh, Tim Walker and uh, Todd Clemens. Mm -hmm. If we need a classroom, we can accommodate that. What, an agricultural suite? Yes, we can accommodate that. The Health Sciences Suite has a lab with four patient beds, a classroom to accommodate 20 to 25 <coughs> students, large supply room, and office for the teacher. The Marketing Suite has a marketing classroom to accommodate 20 to 25 students, a media room, and a control room that oversees the, the film that's taking place, and a supply room and an office. Engineering suite 
has an engineering lab, an office, and a supply room. Next is the staff area. It's got a conference room to accommodate 24 um, individuals, and it's a flexible arrangement, so you can adjust that as necessary. A break room, uh, two toilets, and a, a data room. And the last component to this project is the business education suite, which has an office, a supply room, and a classroom to accommodate 20 to 25 students. So this is what that building could potentially look like. This is a bird's eye view. So we're tying into the existing entrance at this point. We're going to brick in and provide storefront of the existing walkway and tie our new building into it so that it looks like it was always part of the campus. What kind of roof would that be? A Duralast membrane. So that's a ground level view, the entrance. And the colonnade that's on the front of the building right at the entry point, we would duplicate that on the building, again, tying in that architectural language of the campus. So this project is 24,000 square feet roughly. It's going to run at about $113 a square foot, so the project cost is $2.7 million. Again, our design fee is based on the Alabama Building Commission fee schedule, and this is a, considered a Group 3 building type. So the fee percentage on that is 6.7%. So if you take the total construction costs multiplied by the fee percentage, it's a rough run in about $183,000. Again, we would offer you the 5% discount, which would save you about $9,100. So our total reduced fee would be $174,000. I would like to add that that fee also includes the specialty consultant that I talked about, which is usually considered an additional service over and above a basic design contract. Um, and that value is about $6,400, and it will also include an interior design fee, which is usually considered over and above a basic design service. And that value is about $4,500. So we'll absorb those costs, which it saves you a total of over $20,000. So why us? Why should you select Blondheim and Nixon? First of all, we have a previous working relationship with people involved in the education sector. We know how to streamline the process. We work with the Building Commission all the time, so we know how the proper protocols to go through to make this project move forward smoothly. We're a local firm. If you have a problem, we want you to call us. We'll, we'll respond immediately. If there's an issue out on site, we're five minutes away from the construction site. We can be there to resolve the issue immediately versus waiting two or three days um, to get it resolved. The majority of our work is from repeat clients. We give personal design <coughs> services to our clients. We're available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We give you our personal cell numbers. If you have an issue, we want you to call us so that we can get it resolved. We're passionate about architecture, and we're committed to ensuring that you get a quality product at the end of this. We want to make sure that this building meets and exceeds your expectations. And a client of ours, I'll use to sum this up, um, he is a commissioner with the state of Alabama, and he recently said, that, and I quote, I don't want to use another architect. I want Blondheim and Mixon. And the reason that I want them is when I call them, they respond immediately. I'm not transferring a voicemail, and I don't have to wait three days for a phone call to be returned. And I want to know that I matter. He matters to us, and you matter to us. We live in this community. This project is important to us on a personal level. The success of it is important to us on a personal level. We've worked for you in the past, and we're asking for the opportunity to work for you. So thank you. Very, very nice.
Nice graphic. Thank you. What is, what is y'all's your time turn around like after you say do your you know, our designs, we would go back and forth on that and then you go to bid. Uh, generally on a career tech project, uh, what do you see that as being a length of time? We're looking at about nine months construction period. We feel so that would be adequate. So multi purpose? Yes, sir. The athletic building, we're thinking about six months. Do you would be problem? adequate time. Now, you can obviously condense that, but you're going to pay a little bit more money to have that time condensed. Drainage issues on that career center. Right. Add it, <coughs> attach it to the building. I'll let Bill oh. handle that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard. Any uh, drainage issues with connecting that career center to the, to the existing building? Actually, we've uh, already done some work and looked at that, and mm -hmm. we uh, have a solution that we can, think we can take <coughs> care of the drainage without any problem. Uh, if you're familiar with the over on the middle school side of Lake Drive, there's a large pitch point down on the pipe over there that goes along the edge of Baltic, quite deep. We've shot the elevation. We know we can get a pipe all the way from the bus parking area where the tractors are parked. We know we can get a pipe all the way from there across Lake Drive to tie into that with putting a slope and a depth and all those things that will that'll work. Be able to tie all that drainage in and take care of it. It'll, it'll clear up the drainage problems in that area. Are you capable of, is your firm capable of doing both projects at the same time? Yes, sir. We are. We handle a lot of volume of work in our office. We do have four people, but, but we will make it work. We, we, can, we can put we it out. <laughs> <laughs> we can put we it work. out. If we got to work, we work. I don't care if it's all night long. We've done it most of the night. Before when Jeannie first got here, we had to redo a project that they changed over the, the last minute. And I don't know how many days and nights we spent on it. And if we need somebody else, we call them. We can find people to work for. There's plenty of people out there that need a job. But but we're more than capable with our current staff We've handled it to handle far. it. Jeannie, do you have any concerns about the flat roof of that project? No, sir, not at all. We, we do a lot of problems at the high school. You've had some problems, yes, sir. Um, let, let me y'all re-roof that thing twice mm -hmm. the first time we did it and what was wrong with the roof eventually we found out it's got interior drains and they were cast iron bell and spigot and they let it and when it started leaking again I, I went over and I said I'm going to find this leak so I found four or five of them I got a ladder took the tile out and it was raining because that's what I went out there for and it was Backing up out of that leaded joint, and I called Billy Carter. He came over there and he brought his guys, and they reset that lid, and it quit leaking. Now I don't know what the problem was. Y'all have leaked, y'all have roofed it since then. I don't know what that problem was, and I don't know what type roof he put on it. But we we would use a membrane a Duralast is the one we like the best, and it's white and it's reflective. One of the state agencies that we work with specifically requests Duralast, and we've re-roofed um, barrel vault arches. I mean, we've done so many projects with a Duralast membrane roof and been so pleased. The owner is, I mean, it's got a 15-year weather tightness warranty that can be attached to it if you'd like. I mean, and they will stand by it. It's a good system. We haven't had any problems. Anything else? Okay, we do appreciate it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you want that sample back, you want them to shoot it. Oh, here it is. If you want it. Okay. It feels good. I think I like to play with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did your own thing. Richard wasn't too interested in it. I was over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice term. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a nice facility in Oklahoma, by the way. Well, we, we just, we want one a little bit nicer. Yeah. What? We want one a little bit nicer. Well, nice. we're going to make it nice. <laughs> we like that one, and we, we know what we can improve on. Oh, we got we're a little sitting out there that yes. came from Opelika. Oh, yeah. Oh, so he, yeah, he knows. He got an office in it. I bet they know that.
Coach Moore. We had a good time visiting with Coach Black. You're right, Coach. Yeah. He said he is passionate. He is passionate, and we saw it. It was he, great. He literally did draw that whole thing. It was amazing. Yeah, he did. I was very impressed. He did. A lot of heartfelt work in there. Yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank, Thank you, Alan. Okay. We appreciate it. We Thank appreciate you very your time. Thank you. 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 That was the last of our uh, four architectural firms to uh, give us presentations as to the uh, Career Tech Center that's being proposed, as well as the multi-purpose sports uh, plex that's being proposed. And from this point, um, if I can get a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. We're adjourned. Thank you. Welcome to Follow Vapor. Save thousands of dollars and quit smoking at Follow Vapor in the Sable Ridge Center on 431 South. Follow Vapor, a safe way to stop smoking. Try it for free at Follow Vapor.